like you're a scammer. Scam, scam. Immediately, you nowadays, make a dollar other than trading. Yeah. Scam. It's like yeah. bro, and, you ain't got bro, no dollars. That's the thing, cool. like, it's that's like, the what? thing bro. Like, if you make any single cent anywhere else that's yeah, outside yeah. of trading, oh, it's a scam. Yeah, scam. It's, like, scam. it's like, like, am I a scam or am I and smart? Before we get into the episode, I want to let you know that Words of Wisdom is going up to a whole new level. Already, thousands of traders have gotten funded, become full-time, and have completely changed their trading game thanks to the podcast. And that is our mission. Our whole mission is to give you as much value as possible so that you can be the best trader possible. Now, the first way of you being able to do that through this platform is making sure that you're subscribed and hit the notification bell so you never miss an upload. On top of that, I've created a free Telegram group where I am giving discounts, giveaways, free technical course, free mindset course, everything you can think of is in that Telegram group. The link's in the description. Make sure you check that out. As well as we're taking things to a new level through an email list. We're going to create an amazing e-newsletter and we're going to be giving as much value as possible through that, whether it's technicals, fundamentals, psychology, you name it, it's all going to be in there. Link's in the description. Now let's get into this mega episode. Welcome everyone to the Words of Wisdom podcast. We are back once again. We are still in Miami and we are still the number one trading podcast in the trading space. Thanks to all of you and our incredible guests. Talking of which, we have some absolutely incredible guests with us today. Another roundtable just for all of you. And we have Casper SMC, we have J Cap FX, we have Lambert Raul, and we have Q Banks. First of all, thank you all for being here today. And I'll just throw it out there straight away and we'll start with you, Casper. Um, very simple question. Like, why did you get into trading? So, man, first off, thank you for having me on. It's a pleasure as always. Um, but man, so when I first got into trading, it wasn't really trading as much. It was more just buying crypto and holding it, right? Like I, I had friends that were into mining it and they would just tell me all the time, like, oh, you need to get into this, you know, this and that. And I had no idea really like what any of it even meant, right? I'm just like, okay, this was back when you had to buy Bitcoin off something called local Bitcoin. Or they had other things too, but like literally you had to buy Bitcoin like in person from like somebody who had Bitcoin. There, there were other ways, you know, there's like Mt. Gox and all that stuff. But I bought Bitcoin, right? Just put whatever I had into it, kept buying it. And then it, it blew up, right? So I got super lucky. And then I was thinking, okay, you know, I'm a trader, right? Like, like I made some money, I'm, I'm gonna keep doing this. And uh, pretty much over the next couple of years, slowly round tripped most of that, dumped more money in, lost it. Just kind of kept back and, you know, going back and forth. I never really took it seriously, though, right? Um, and I was working a sales job. I was doing, like, solar sales, doing... I, I, I didn't really like it. You know what I mean? Solar sales is not really... It's not something that's fun. It's not something that's eventful. Um, and then COVID ended up coming around, and I started seeing, like, more ads. Like, I remember it was a Snapchat promo of all things. It wasn't even Instagram or Twitter or YouTube. It was some... This group that now I'm an owner in, um, they basically were paying for influencer shout-outs. So... They were posting all these gains, you know, like, oh, this is actual trading. Because I had been, like, you know, trading, but I wasn't really trading, right? Like, I was just, like, you know, no risk management, no actual strategy. Like, I'd watch some stuff, like, I remember, like, trading 212 and, like, those basic, you know, channels. You're really not going to learn much that actually will make you money. Um, but I started trading in that Discord. I joined it, started taking it seriously and started understanding, like, oh, okay, there's actual structure to this. You can, you know... There's actual risk management. Started learning uh, other strategies than like ICT and SMC. This is just, you know basic like Fib stuff. Um, but yeah, then fast forward a couple years, here we are. But that's how I got started originally. Yeah, so I actually got into trading. It was just kind of like random. Um, my close friend from kindergarten actually, uh, when I dropped out of college, he was still at home, and he kind of invited me over to his place down the street, uh, and they were kind of trading forex at the time. And this is like right around the Fukushima power plant explosion. And uh, at the time, I didn't, you know, I knew what the stock market was and stuff, but I didn't realize like people were actually going short and long in the market. Like you can make money both ways. Uh, just seeing like that terminal, and interestingly enough, the MetaTrader 4 terminal is the same as it was back then, you know, 2011. <laughs> um, but the reason why I stuck with it was because like it seemed like an easy way to make money, right? Like everybody gets into trading because you can click a button and just make money like almost instantly. Um, but yet, little did I know that that journey was going to take me, you know, however long it took me to become profitable, which was like close to seven or eight years. Um, and thanks to the prop space, it allowed me to like leverage my capital more so than I, would I, I'd be able to just working a regular job, you know, because I wasn't uh, like an A plus student. I, I didn't have like super uh, high grades, so I never really got like that career start that I wanted. So I kind of had a slow career start after leaving college. Um, but yeah, I've stuck with it ever since and yeah, kind of 
Here, here we are today. Yeah, That's man. it, yeah. Yeah, my story's pretty simple. It's a long one, so I'll, I'll try and summarize it as best as possible. Uh, the original career path out of high school that I wanted to go to, I was no longer able to actually do because of a medical diagnosis that I had. So literally one day online stumbling upon how I can make money online, I came across, uh, across day trading. And that's basically where it all started for me. Like I already knew kind of what the stock market was. Like I had a general idea. I thought people made money in the stock market by just buying stocks, holding <clears> them. And then when they went up, they just cashed out and then moved on to the next stock. That was my overall ideology of what trading was, but I didn't know it got this intricate nor did I think it would actually take me this far, you know, years down the line. That's kind of like a short story on how I got into, uh, into day trading. Yeah. yeah. So with me, um, I mean, I was first introduced to trading at 20 years old. Stock options first. So I was, you know, in that field first. And then I kind of put it to the side for like a couple of years. And then I took it back up at 24. Um, around that time, like, you know, Facebook w was kind of going crazy. Like everybody w was doing something online in some kind of way, like affiliate marketing and that, and that kind of stuff. And some people were um, also trading as well. I took it back up at that time. Um, they were doing the market maker method. I'm pretty sure y'all know about it, all right? Mm -hmm. um, and I took it back up. At that time, like I had some friends that, that were making like 10K a day and that kind of stuff. Like I knew that there was there's some kind of truth behind every single lie, right? So it's not like I doubted them, but at the same time, like if there's something there, then there's some, something real there no matter how small it might be, you know? So I took it up, um, I joined a group and everything called um, War Three at, at the time in 2014. Um, I stuck with it. I started making a, a, a little bit of profit here and there, $20 here, $30 here, that, that kind of stuff, each and every single day, like while I was still working at Target. And um, and yeah, like um, I kind of like just stuck with it in my group. I, I, I became kind of like stand outish in that group. And um, I started making a bit more more and more money over time and like since I had friends that, that were doing very very well inside of it I knew that like if I stuck with it long enough I could, I could eventually start making that kind of money eventually you know what I'm saying like even if it was 5k day and that kind of stuff like and I started making that kind of money in like like about five years in but at the same time like you know I knew that this was the only route that I could actually take to to, to like afford the kind of things that I'm that I'm actually into as, as far as cars um condos traveling no other kind no other kind of job can, can actually make me get that, that kind of um, lifestyle, you know? So um, trading was the only way that I pretty much seen fit, and then I kind of just stuck with it over time and everything, you know? Definitely. Yeah, yeah I love that. And, yeah. you know, in terms of uh, trading-wise, like all of you, if I'm not mistaken, started, you know, maybe not in the industry you're trading right now. Mm -hmm. So I think you guys are in equities <coughs> now or indices? Uh, now, yeah. Yeah, and then yeah. you guys, you were in FX and then now yeah. into futures. Yeah. You in crypto, now into futures. Yeah, as well. I, was, I started in crypto, but now I just trade futures like NASDAQ. Yeah. Yeah, NASDAQ ES sometimes. But so, like, what's it been like to change? Because you know, a lot of people right now are going to be going through a lot of changes, more than likely, and a lot of people really resist change in their trading. Like, so, have any tips or anything that really helped you to just embrace change or, you know, just kind of accept change? To be honest, bro, I've always said, like, I mean, if you can trade, you can trade, man. Like, it ain't, there, there's nuance and there's differences for sure. Like, yes, like, position sizing is different in futures. The way I looked at it, I was like, okay, well, I'm just longing or, or I'm just playing with a 20 lot per contract to NQ, right? It's, it's literally the same thing. It's just changing your position sizing. Now, if you're changing from, like, maybe trading, like, London session to New York session, okay, you're changing your times. You're changing a little bit of, like, what's, you know, what kind of strategies work better during some, you know, uh, sessions and other, but relatively it, it's all the same, bro. Like, um, I also came from like swing trading at first, right? So I think a lot of people that get started, um, especially like right now, everybody's just day trading, one minute entry, five minute entries. Um, and I think that then everyone's like, oh, like how would I transition to swing trading? Which to me is weird. Cause I'm like, if you can do that, you know, the swing trading, as far as like the technical part is way easier. You're going to have way higher hit rate. Um, but I think a lot of people overthink it. Like everybody right now, like you said, with all the, the stuff that's going on with, you know, Forex props and everything is like, um, everybody's, oh, what am I going to do? And I, and I just always tell people, like, if you got the skill, bro, this doesn't really matter. Like, you're going to have a little bit of a learning curve. You got to get used to it. But like, bro, what are you going to do? You know what I'm saying? If, if, if you're forced to change, you're going to have to change. But it, it's, I think people overthink it for sure, though. Definitely. Yeah, so I actually only made the transition from Forex to Futures in the last like month or so, just out of necessity, because uh, obviously I have to adapt. I mean, in my opinion, like, and, and you had th this discussion with Trader Man on your podcast, right? And I think what I'm noticing is in Futures, there's 
higher vol there's more volatility in those markets. So me finding a higher risk reward trade on a day-to-day -day basis seems a lot easier. So that transition actually seems a lot easier than what most people might think. Like Forex is an efficient market. Like they're global currencies, they have to be stable. So like when you're looking at the Euro dollar today, the daily change was zero, zero percent, zero point zero zero percent. And then you look at NQ and ES, they're up two percent. Like I think the edge in other markets is definitely there. And that's something that I haven't really explored that much. But now going forward, I think it's something that people really should look at, like finding edge in a different asset class that might not be the one that you're used to. Like get used to one. Like if you started out in Euro, like there's nothing wrong with uh, taking that skill set and testing different markets, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, for me personally, I think change is a necessity, not just to be able to change the new market and adapt to those new market conditions, but even the platforms and tools that are available to you. You know, sometimes it's going to be for the better, maybe for the worse, but it's a necessity, you know, and not just change in trading, but in change in life as well. Sometimes that is a crucial step that you need to take. I mean, for those people who are just too stuck on, you know, the old platforms, such as the problem that's going on with MetaTrader, mm -hmm. it's like, Bro, if you know how to trade, you could go and trade on any platform if you're still able to execute. Like he said previously, there might be minor differences, but if you could still execute perfectly, then there really shouldn't be too much of a problem in my yeah. personal Yeah, you opinion. just need a buy and sell button, right? Yeah. That's all you really need. Yeah. Limit, stop. Yeah. <laughs> so I think like um, I've, I've had like the most amount of change um, throughout like you guys here, like at the moment, honestly, because um, I mean, even before I got onto MetaTrader, I was on another platform. Like I forgot like what it was called and everything, but it was like, like a like a black and yellow platform like back then. It was on Forks Broker Inc. own platform and everything like back then. And um, back then I, I was also trading oil. You know what I'm saying? So I, I started on oil first before any kind of currencies and indexes and that kind of stuff. And then eventually I got onto currencies for a couple of years and then cryptos for a couple of years and then traded gold for like about 10 months and then now it's indexes. So I think um, I've, I've had to adapt to the markets many, many times based off of me just trying to upgrade like like my trading assets over time because I see myself trading currencies and then things got too slow for me based on like like my ability to, to analyze like fast and everything. So that's when I went to like a newer pair every single time that was a bit faster. And now I'm on US 30. So US 30 pretty much gives me the kind of money that I want to make, but also like it's as volatile as it needs to be. So I could actually see the kind of profit that I want to see, you know? So um, I think it was just more like this me adapting based off like, like my level of skill so it could actually level out because I started um, being very, very good at AU like long time ago. But then I, th I think like I was analyzing too fast and too, I was trying to an anticipate the move too, e um, too easily to the point that I would just mess up. So I had to go on a pair that's pretty much faster so it's, it's matching the rate that I'm, I'm also analyzing as well. You know what I'm saying? So like yeah. I, I had to adapt to like something that's newer and fresh. Yeah, 30's yeah. fast, man. 30's yeah, crazy, yeah. yeah. But the same amount of effort that you're putting to analyze a slow pair, to put that same amount of effort into an index, and you're making it's more money. Like, yeah, yeah. A person yeah. Can that's why I think that money. transition is easier. Yeah, but yeah. a person can make more money just by just that, change of pair. Yeah. yeah. Same kind of analysis, same kind of effort, same kind of everything. It's just a different asset. That's yeah, right. especially on indices too, like the risk reward opportunities on a day to day basis is incredible compared yeah. to any Forex pair. Yeah. You just, it's, they're non comparable. Yeah, like, um, I feel. I think with indexes, like it pretty much tells you when, like when you're wrong, very, very easily. You mm -hmm. know, like very, very quickly. And then at that point, you can pretty much just write out a move, and it's and the pip count is worth more. Yeah, yeah. In forex, it's like it'll range for in a twenty pip range for four hours. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. But even like you're not even getting like one future, out of it. I've never ever dabbled in futures yet, but a lot of people that I know like that have been do doing um currencies. They're going to futures now. Yeah, there's I don't know no why. Spread. There's no spread. See, I haven't even experienced yeah. that. Yet. You know <laughs> yes, what I'm saying? But yeah. e eventually, I do want to dabble in it. But I'm not opposed to it. But you know, like when the time comes, though. So. Yeah. No, because there's a lot of options traders as well switching to futures, and I, and I've, I've been asking them as well the same reason. But yeah, it's it's just so interesting. I think it's so important as you guys have highlighted in terms of like having being open to change. You know, and. Um, one thing that's very interesting about this this roundtable and why we've done it in this way is that we have like the the industry's changes and always changes over time. And you guys have been you know, within the industry and the, you know, sort of with the community for so long now. And you've probably seen these changes. Yeah. Um, well, we're kind of just coming up, if you will. Mm -hmm. And 
But we've been part of like the whole SMC ICT sort of crowd, and then they're very loud, as you can imagine. Till this day, I don't know the anything court. about those. I know, it's good. Yeah. It's good. But that's why the it's court. interesting because I, I know you get the comments though, like, hey, why don't you use these uh, order blocks or your risk to reward or your stop loss size? And it's always interesting. Like, what are your thoughts when it, you trade the way you like to trade and have been trading? And I've been doing it profitably, but then there's people always trying to tell you of this new style, or maybe you're doing this wrong. Let's take a break for a minute there, guys, because I want to tell you about the best trading tool on the market, TradeZella. The reason why TradeZella is the number one trading tool that every trader needs is because you can do backtesting, automated journaling, trade replay, in-depth analytics, and so much more. And the greatest part about TradeZella is that it's all automated. All you have to do is connect your MT4 and MT5 it will pull all your data onto the dashboard. You can add playbooks. You can just add notes. You can add images from your trades and you can get the insights that is necessary for you to progress as a trader. Now, TradeZella is for absolutely everyone. Whether you're a crypto trader, whether you're a Forex trader, whether you trade prop firms, it is for absolutely everyone. And that is why thousands of traders have signed up using my link here through the podcast. Make sure you use the code RIZ10 for 10% off your monthly subscription or WOR for 20% off your yearly subscription. The link is in the description below. And let's get back to the episode. So people have been trying to push ICT upon me for the past like five years. It's like, <laughs> same. Yo, yo, yo Q, man, like just try this. <laughs> this is better. But I'm like, yeah, but I'm doing great with how I'm trading, you know? So it's kind of like, you know, um, but personally, till this day, I haven't really seen much ICT people or SMC people that's making more, more kind of big profits that I make with their style. That's yeah, I feel like a lot of people it. have also tried pushing like the whole ICT agenda, if that's how you want to put it onto <laughs> me too. And I'll even mm -hmm. have like people in my chat nowadays like, oh, there's a, uh, an yeah, FVG here and then we have this over here and then a conch. And I'm like, bro, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> I think they, like, com they complicate trading way more than it needs to be. I feel like for me personally, it doesn't matter how you make money in the markets. It doesn't matter if you trade smart money concepts. I know people who trade trend lines and make an absolute killing, right? It's as long as you're profitable in the long run. In that system that you're trading has a positive expectancy <clears throat> in the long run. But to me, it's like, Bro, there's, I've, I've had so many people trying to actually push ICT on me and like to start learning ICT and smart money concepts. And I'm like, bro, I've been trying to do this for the last few years. You really think that if I'm making money right now, I'm just going to randomly switch up my strategy. And not just that, I feel like also when it comes to like a lot of the people who are in the, that space, right? I feel like people make it try and sound more complicated than what it really needs to be because trading, when you talk to an average person who knows nothing about trading, it sounds like it's, it's like this, this super complicated thing to really get into, but when you break it down, like it's, it's really not. So you could push an agenda maybe a little bit easier when it sounds that complicated because it makes sense. Yeah. That's true. That's yeah, no, true. that's very true, man. And that's like, I think that the stigma that a lot of people put on it is like, cause exactly that, right? Cause it's like a marketing tool. Cause that's yeah. really what it was. That's how like 100%. it started. You know what I'm saying? Like the whole like, uh, kind of, you know, conspiracy, like I know what you don't know, like that all stuff is yeah. like all created to be a marketing tool. That's really yeah. what it is. But at the end of the day too, like something I noticed a lot is like, a lot of the times like good setups are forming like for like an ICT trader. Well, they're also forming for a hundred other types of traders. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? 100%. So like I wholeheartedly agree, like whatever you're doing, if you're making money, like don't even, why would you even think about changing it? You know what I'm saying? It's just like, that's the last thing you do in trading. Like, yeah. Once you yeah. get something that works, you just refine it. You yeah. know? But it's like, when does a person even like start doing SMC or ICT and then transition over to being like a, a technical trader? You know, like, yeah. like when does that happen? You know, I like, mean, what, like what has to be shown so, so they could even, even convert in some kind of way you mean like technical like just like a different like style a different style like, yeah like yeah, a different yeah. style. um i don't know i think a lot of people they get stuck in it because like they've kind of like accepted the the gospel of it i don't know if i read a word of ict like literally that's how people look at it though it's like a call bro but i think that you that they get lost in the wrong, yeah they get lost <laughs> in the wrong thing at the end of the day man like i know a lot of people like for example i have students that are also a member of your community and we trade completely different but they're mm -hmm. like oh like i've blended some of the stuff and they yeah, come up with their too. own strategy you know what i mean yeah so i think really what it comes down to is like most of the people that are in any uh space of trading when they're learning aren't making money so they kind of will learn they'll either stick with that one until they learn or they might end up strategy hopping 
um, and hopefully they find another one where they'll be profitable. So I think what it makes people switch is just not it not working for them. I think that, that that's probably like the, the most dangerous thing that you can do. Oh, 100%. Because like yeah. this person and this person, this person, they all trade differently, but they're all profitable in some kind of way. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So at the same time, they're trying to actually even combine styles and that kind of stuff is not going to work. Yeah, no, I agree, just, man. Just, just stick with a style and critique it over time to the point that it actually works. Yeah, I made that yeah, mistake yeah. like for years. Just something wouldn't work for me for like, well, it would work for like three months and then market conditions would change and then it stopped working and then I had jumped a system. And then like, it it, um, it stunts your growth curve. Like, because once you, once you start picking up momentum then you're switching it, switching something and then you're not really getting all the nuance that you should be getting, right? Because all those systems could have a ton of nuance and you're not going to get it just in three months. Mm -hmm. And like, I think it's interesting you brought it up where... I saw some, a, lot, a lot of people tweeting and like defending ICT concepts. It's like, why are you looking at this? Like, this is what happened. This is a fair value gap. This is a break of structure. And you can kind of just tell those people have fixed mindsets over something. Like they can't uh, comprehend like having an open mindset that somebody else has a different system that works in the markets that is not ICT, right? They're trying to like defend it like tooth and nail. They could see you in Providence and and still tell you that you're incorrect. Yeah, yeah that's always the best. Literally. Oh, he got lucky. <laughs> yeah. He got lucky. That's the only opposition I have against, like, probably those, some of those, I don't want to, like, generalize all of them, but it's like, bro, like, you it's have this majority, ego. Yeah, yeah, you have, like, yeah. this ego in the markets that you're trading the system and you don't even have 100 grand of your own personal trading capital, yeah. nor do you really have the skin in the game to be like, yeah, your system sucks. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So for me, it's more like, you have this huge ego inside of the markets where ego kills you. Yeah, so yeah like, it's the mental edge. What's, what's, really, mental what's edge. really going on yeah. here? I think like um, I had like my like the same style that I trade now. Like I've been trading for the past like nine years, actually. Like well, eight years because the first year was market making method, right? But beyond that, it was just more just like trial and error, trial and error, trial and error, and mm-hmm. then, like like fixing certain things in my style. It could be like the most smallest thing, like how I even apply a tread line and like you know the, the small things, but nine years, eight years of critiquing got it to where it is now. Yeah. And I think that's what it is. Like, if you stick with your style, then you it'll eventually get to a point that it's profitable. You know? People yeah. are, like, perpetually stuck in the trial and error phase, though. That sucks. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I they're know. just stuck there forever. Yeah. yeah. What, nah. But like, why do you think, though? I don't know. I just think they, like, they, they haven't figured out what works. Like, they're probably not analyzing their data enough to say, like, I took this trade. This is exactly what worked. It's like, when they, when they win, it almost feels like luck. Right, so yeah. Like, so like like my um theory behind that is, is probably because um so, so like I've only tra- traded demo like I think like about a couple weeks w- like when I first started because I think it's um you're not really getting the true feeling of trading if you're just on demo the entire time so throughout like like my entire like development of like my style and everything else like I'm live the entire time even if it's like a hundred dollar account or a thousand dollar account it's still live mm-hmm. so you're still gaining emotion and like you have like the um the urge to want to fix it, like want to actually, you know, understand like why it's not working and that kind of stuff, to even like critique those small things and that kind of stuff. So I feel like it just, it kind of forces you to grow. And that trial and error phase eventually kind of like just goes out the window because you kind of like are forcing yourself to actually make money in real money that you're actually using. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And yeah. I think what you probably noticed it too, like when you're scaling up, like that same trade that you took, that might've been $50. Like you could have made that same exact trade and now it's 5k, 100%. you know what I mean? It's just the size is different. It's yeah. so like when you find something that works on the smallest amount of money, just try and scale that up but, as but big as you can. You got to have balls though. Yeah. I mean, if you're already just Yeah, yeah. So. I mean, you yeah. can kind of like find a way to like grow them, you know, like, cause, <laughs> cause true, not yeah. everybody's like comfortable risking X amount. Like, cause when I came to the game, I was only risking like $50, $100, you know, just like you. And then over time, like, you get more and more comfortable. Just they're just numbers on the screen, right? It's just video yeah. Game. I think like when I, I thought about that um concept, it's just numbers. It's literally just, just a game that you gotta try to be a part of as as long as possible. That's when um I kind of started seeing like the most amount of growth, because um I've always wanted to play the game. I've always wanted to be in the game, stay in the game as long as possible. Because once you're in the game as long as possible, you get, you you get the most amount of, of experience mm-hmm. compared to some people that they. They blow an account, and then they take like three months off, yeah. and now you're oh, three yeah, months no. behind. You just reset yourself. You know what I'm saying? In three months, so so much movements could have been changed as far as like the the market environments change each and every single season. Um, you're three seasons behind now because you haven't experienced that slow season and that kind of stuff. And, and trying to actually understand how to how to analyze in a slow season, in a fast season. Yeah, you know? yeah. So when it comes back around, they don't have the experience. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. They missed out on the last yeah. time. So yeah. I, th- I think it's just um, very important to kind of like just be a part of every single season. I, I personally have never taken a season off 
probably like about two weeks off or, or even a month off, but to take a whole three months off, it makes That's no crazy. sense. It makes no sense. That's crazy. You're, 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 you're missing out on a lot of money, a lot of pips, hundreds of thousand dollars that, that you could have made um, based on your, your lot size and that kind of stuff, but at the same time, try to stay in the game as long as possible. Bro, even just like, not even the amount of money you could have missed out on, but just all of the experience you could have potentially gained. Imagine just going to the gym <clears throat> every single month, every single day, every single mm -hmm. week, consistently for the next six months. Imagine like the compound of results that you've been able to get over those six months, and then you just stop for three months and try and come back. Of course, you're not going to see the yeah. same results. The, the muscle memory, you it's, know, it's, 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 it's there, but it's not there. You yeah, know? No, no, it's no, not yeah. as sharp. You like, just reset yourself. You fall out of shape like faster than Super you know, quick. Than, yeah, Super yeah, quick. Yeah, 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 because like, like I, I've noticed that like whenever I'm on a roll, I can make. 25 winning trades in a row, boom, 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 all wins. But then all of a sudden I have a loss and I have to take a loss to actually get out of that, that um, rhythm and everything, you know what I'm saying? Like, I have to lose, you know? So I think like going through that is just very important so, so you can actually get those hits to kind of like know that, you know what, I'm, I'm real too, yeah. you know? <laughs> you know? So, 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 so like you can have these back-to-back -back wins and everything, but I think like once you actually get in a rhythm of winning, it's kind of hard to stop winning because you kind of like understand where the market is, understand like where your um, targets are, like you're understanding like, you know, like all like the time frames and that kind of stuff. Like you're pretty much like in tune with like every single thing that's going on w within the market at that point in time until you stop and then you kind of like lose track of everything. And you got to get slowly back into it. Yeah, yeah you're going to get comfortable yeah. with losing because like if you get if you just have a massive like deflating loss, like you're going to want to take like a three month break, you know, because no. there's people like Wall Street bets. I don't know if you guys would go like, oh, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, crazy. Bro, bro, crazy. Yeah, people are just they're like degenerates, their life bro. savings. Yeah. On like zero DTE options. I, I would say like that's gambling yeah, instead that's, of yeah. that's gambling instead of trading. What's I feel like there's a fine. Wall Street bets. Wall Street bets. Oh, yes, it's, it's, it's a subreddit. Yeah. yeah, but the, I think there's a fine line between what trading is and gambling. Wall Street bets is just like full DJ and gambling. Yeah. Might as well go to the casino. But I feel like that's where kind of a lot of traders are at though, like because they see that you can make easy money from markets, like, but they're trying to like take that small account. And flip. Not not to say that you can't do it because people can do it, obviously, but yeah. you have to be comfortable with the with blowing that account possibly. Like a lot of people are just not comfortable with it. So people might hate to hear this, but trading is a form of gambling in some kind yeah, of way, yeah. but mm -hmm. it's a sophisticated, yeah. um, it's, a, it's a sophisticated <laughs> form of gambling with um, a theory behind it. I agree, you know? I agree. But in some kind of way, like it could easily be. It's just the edge is in your favor. Yeah. The yeah. probabilities are in your favor. It's no, really all Yeah, right. I think it's better than a casino, right? It has the yeah, possibility yeah. to be in your favor. Some people that don't actually study enough and that kind of stuff, they are obviously on the opposite end, but at the same of time, course. people that actually putting that work enough, they understand the market and um, flow of, of the charts enough to even make it be in their favor in some kind of yeah. way. Yeah. It's the same thing with counting cards. The guy that knows how to count cards is not putting his whole bankroll on the next on card, hand. you know what yeah, I mean? No. Like he's managing that bankroll, like yeah, he's gonna size up on the next hand that comes <clears> out, but he's not like betting the farm on the next hand. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah no, totally. Just because your hand, the, the hand that you have is fantastic and the probability for you to win is super high, there's still that chance you could still mm -hmm. lose. So you still have to manage your position yeah. properly. But and then they like I think I'm always open to losing. I'm um, always say that I'm not scared to see red. You know what I'm saying I could be in drawdown for a couple of days, coming back. You know, but, yeah. but at the same time, like as long as like the risk and everything for that that trade makes sense, then you know. But How no. is it for you then, like in terms of you know for after trading for so long, <clears> what <throat> is it that keeps you motivated to keep trading? Because I'm sure like you could have stopped trading years ago and been absolutely fine. I love the game, bro. Mm -hmm. I love the game, man. Um, I love just being in the market, seeing like the, like that's the only thing that kind of like gets like my heart racing at times, you know, like even like seeing like a, a big spike on like a, a red folder, all of a sudden like your heart is racing at like 170 instantly. You know, like not much can get your heart rate. Trading FOMC. Yeah, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. but. No matter how much you yeah. try and like limit that like mental, uh, like I guess blip, it's so hard to do. Like everybody's like just detached from your emotions. Like it's extremely hard to do, especially when that red folder. You don't know what's gonna happen. You know, yeah, I mean? there's no. that uncertainty. But it's fun though. Like yeah. it's not. It's, it's your fun. platform freezes. Yeah, and you're just like, it's what? exciting. And I, I think the um, fact that like you have the ability to, you know, change your entire life in that one trade at times. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's possible. So like you know, just even having that optimism behind the entire form of trading, it makes you want to keep on going because. You know, you might be broke now, but that's not like you could make rent and everything within two trades. That kind of thing. Yeah, yeah I think now yeah. you're seeing it too, like, because there's a lot more prop traders coming up in the space that are like able to create like a living for themselves out of like essentially nothing. The ROI yeah. on a prop yeah, it, account it's is like huge. Crazy. Yeah, though. because um, I, the thing with, with props alone, I think it's just, it gives people an opportunity because, like, you know, there's people that pretty much have hard capital, um, but I'm saying that there's people that pretty much just can't really afford it. 
Yeah. They still work mm-hmm. that, that that nine to five. That you know their money that they're getting each and every single month. That that pretty much is rent. That's um, insurance. That's pretty much food. That's or, everything. Or like maxing out the retirement. Yeah, so yeah. So so a prop just gives a person an opportunity to even like you know be a part of the people that pretty much have that hard capital in some kind of way. You know. What's it like for you, obviously, when you were coming up? Mm. Props weren't even a thing. Props weren't even a thing. Um, FTMO, we, um, I knew about FTMO from 2015, but like how they were marketing, it didn't seem real. <laughs> you know, it didn't seem real because like it didn't make sense at all. Like, oh, like we'll fund you so and so, but it didn't make sense for people that pretty much was trading at the time because they thought it was all it was all a scam. Come to find out, it's not. Mm-hmm. But um, it took so long for everybody else to, to 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 catch on to know that props have a system. That could actually work, so people can actually, you know, get that money that they actually dream of, of actually trading. Damn. But um, like back then it was me. Like it was more just like if I blow an account, like I gotta go back to work for, for like about two weeks or um, three weeks, save up again and try again. Yeah. I had sold like like my car for like around three thousand dollars, like like my um Volkswagen, three K straight into the account. I lost the money in like about a week, <laughs> but I, I was open to taking a risk though, you know, and because I knew that um on the other side of that risk was like that life changing um, chance of making big money and everything. Do you, you know? think yeah. there's benefits crazy, to building bro. in that way? That's what it is. Like, you know? <laughs> Listen, I remember that, bro. Like I sold a car for 3000 I bought a car for 3500 I sold it for 3000 instantly in an account. Fuck yeah. that. Do you, is, there, chance. is there benefits you think that some traders are missing out on from building your own account 100%, in that way? 100%. I think it builds more, it builds more character. It builds more I agree. Um, edge. Like you pretty much understand like the foundation a lot more than people that's trading like nowadays, like I personally think like traders nowadays are kind of soft, you know, because they don't really know like how to actually, they don't have the grit, you know, compared to a person that pretty much had to actually grind for the money and then invest the money and then build the money and then build the money again. So it's, it creates a different kind of trader, a person that's pretty much not open to failing just because they blew an account yeah, yeah, and that yeah. kind of stuff, yeah. you know? There's a big difference when you're losing a hundred K funded account and your own 100k account it's a huge yeah. like there's a, there's a lot of traders yeah. I mean, we talk about it all the time there's a lot of traders that are net profitable with prop but like if you look at their drawdown how many how many accounts they blew you know like that's 10 percent drawdown like they blew every single time if you try to do that on a personal account there's no reset you know if you lose 50 percent of the account there's no reset you gotta you're gonna, have, you're gonna have to make a hundred percent yeah i mean it's a different strategy for sure like the way you the way people have props it's mm-hmm. like are you trying to like replicate that in a personal account like, <clears> no you can't it's not the same right it's not the same it's at all different skill set. but different it's honestly approach. i think um it it builds the emotional intelligence in trading that people that people don't really talk about too often honestly because like with your real money you're, you're more um you're it's, it's a bit more emotional of course like you know like to lose 20k in, in one day all of a sudden you're, you're not going to sleep that night yeah you know oh, yeah. 20k on a prop or like a demo account you yeah. you're going to sleep kind of yeah. like a baby you know like yeah. so account. yeah so yeah. i think it just builds like that emotional um callus mm-hmm. you know um doing like a real account compared to like a demo account or like a prop account that kind of stuff yeah, yeah 100%, 100%. I agree yeah. yeah like props it's like i mean I, I trade props like i'm actually going more into personal <clears> now because it's like it's really not even i mean it's trading but it's really not like exactly what you're saying it's like you're not nobody re, you don't respect that account like you're you're going in with one mentality and that's to just run it up right yeah. on that account yeah. and it's not the same and a lot of the people that like i can't imagine starting trading in this whole like prop era yeah you know yeah. what i'm saying i couldn't imagine that mm-hmm. because like you, you know you start and that's like ict is the most popular thing and everybody's just trading prop accounts that'd be such a weird environment you know what i'm yeah, saying yeah, honestly yeah. though like <laughs> yeah. that's this yeah. you're not building the right habits and like in trading, like you have to build that foundation if you really want to scale to like what what people want in trading, like to make big money. You have to scale not only like your bread, but like the way you deal with money, yeah. the way that you you know the way you handle losses, the way everything yeah. that, that doesn't come with trading yeah. a prop account. No. Yeah. But I think we're gonna see a lot of people transition from props to yeah. personal. Yeah, yeah, yeah to I think work. so too. Like, I, <laughs> yeah. I think I think it's kind of like um like when a person start trading like yesterday and all of a sudden they're just on straight signals twenty four seven. Like they're oh, yeah. they're That's creating a bad problem. foundation immediately because imagine doing signals and doing a prop at the same time like yo like oh dude i see it all the time yeah. you're just like you know you're you're clapped you're clapped yeah. eventually yeah. you know yeah. because <laughs> you're not developing like yeah, that what happens that if true foundation shut down right if prop gets shut down or the signal service oh no nah, you're, you're, you're just like you're screwed oh. but also like you're, you're, you're becoming dependent on somebody else yeah the market's gonna take that money yeah. back the yeah. market always takes back money that you didn't deserve like you can get it from the market but if you stay around long enough like let's say you get real lucky on something you really don't know what you're doing like where you made it off signals and then you try to take like that money and go trade on your own you're oh, not gonna be that money's gone it's gone yeah it's, yeah, it's gone. going yeah. back like it'll, it'll take it it'll, the market always takes it back Couple always days. you know and what i, I mean? feel like also the problem with people who are just getting into trading now who are in the big who are starting to get <clears> into <throat> the prop space like right away 
is like their ultimate goal is I just want that payout. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Versus for me, when I started training, it's like, okay, I want to make money consistently mm -hmm. as much as I possibly can. And how then how can I scale the money that I am trading that I am making consistently out of the markets versus now a lot of prop people are, you know, I just want that one payout. You know, I just want that one big payout. It's like, well, that's your master plan. Yeah, that's, that's why you're working backwards. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But remember, like, yeah. I've, I've seen people have payouts of, you know, like big money, like mm -hmm. 20K, 40K, 80K, like life changing money. So at the same time, like at the same time, I can't really blame them. Mm -hmm. But um, I think the only thing that really matters is that, like, what do they plan on doing after? after yeah, yeah, exactly. Because exactly. Yeah. so for me, I think the smartest thing, like, like when it comes to a prop account is like, OK, make your money on your prop and then start, start your, your, your life account or start to reinvest in education to actually understand, like, how to actually really, really trade, trade, trade. Yeah, no, that's um, what I tell people all the time is, bro, once you do start pulling money out of props, bro, you have to put at least a portion of that into your own personal account. If you want, you can continue to milk all the props as much as possible, but a big portion of the profits that you do pull out of the props should go reinvested right into your own personal account. Yeah, because imagine if like the route that props are going down and everything else, and all of a sudden in like two years, prop is not even like a thing anymore. Yeah. Like yeah, nowhere, yeah. if you're in the US, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. So now those people that, that pretty much were so dependent on props, now all of a sudden that money's spent. Um, they they don't, don't have the skill set. They don't have the skill yeah. set, yeah. nothing. All that time. Th th there's like no, foundation there yep. which sucks now because now they're kind of screwed because like that kind of lifestyle that they wanted to actually live in that kind of thing is now just you know they can't really imagine yeah like like like, like what to even do now because they have no no education no, no prop no kind of signals like all these things are, are slowly failing you know so i think it's very, very important to kind of like um, you know, get a foundation, like and then they get have an education. Like what they want out of yeah, too. take your time to actually learn every single thing that might take time. You know, years and that kind of stuff. But some people just don't want to go the long route. Yeah, no, they for want sure. the money tomorrow. You know, and that's why most people start trading though too. I feel like they, <clears> they look at it like it's easy. Like, oh, I'm just gonna learn this skill. Like I was on a call with a member of my team the other day. He doesn't trade, right? Like, yeah. he he was just weird. You were on the call yeah. too. He was like. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just want to like what, like learn enough to where I just know what what the market's gonna do. Like you know that way I just we're know. Getting, we're and he was like, yeah, if you let me, if you figure that out, let me know. You know so, what I mean? But so, people get in. That's their expectation is that it's just gonna be like, oh, I'm gonna learn this. I'm then I just know trading. Yeah. I'll just yeah. come in and I'll make money. It's like, dude. And I know what the market yeah. is gonna do and where yeah. the market is gonna go. Yeah, it's like man. Those people are always <laughs> new. Um, yeah, as yeah. far as like the um, person that just started learning about trading two weeks ago, they they make a, a couple good trades. All of a sudden, yo, I got it. Yeah. yeah, because I think the person that's pretty much brand new, they think the they think the least, which is the best. That makes sense. Luck. Yeah. Because over time, like we become so wrapped in trying to just learn, 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 and to the point that we learn too much, to the point that we overthink. Yeah. But a person that's pretty much j just starting, they don't know how to think. So at the same time, they just pretty much go off of like this, like the more simplistic way of trading. Like, what's oh, going up? Cool. Bye. It's going down. All right, sell. And they make money in some kind of way, you know? Does it last? Not at all. But at the same time, they, they get an itch to even like want to trade more. Then eventually come to a point that they kind of understand that it takes education to stay in the game. So you can make money in the game for like a week or so, whatever, but can you stay in the game? Yeah. I doubt it. Yeah, no, yeah. that was me, bro. When I started, because I remember I literally like learned fib retracements. No shit. I would just do like one point uh, or like six, one, eight retracements. Pretty much like there was more, a little more to it. Just like either buying or selling like with like a 15 minute or one hour. And I would actually like make decent money. Right. Yeah. But I was like no risk management. I'm like throwing 5% of the account on a trade that mm -hmm. did. But I made good money. I was like, oh, OK, yeah, yeah. Like we're here now. You know what I mean? And then I quickly was humbled and yeah. realized like, oh, there's so much more to but this. But it's kind of interesting <clears throat> to kind of go back to that now. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. You could go back to just using the Fibonacci retracement because you really want yeah. to. Yeah, yeah. You know what's funny? Um, there's times that um I get in, into like a little rut mm -hmm. every now and again, and um I have to go back to like even like like my Confluence 1.0 video, like my first Confluence video that I've ever made back in 2015, and like it's simple concepts, but at the same time like those simple concepts at times it creates those good habits also. Yeah, simplicity so is key. Every now and again, like you got to kind of like go back in those more simplistic type of videos to kind of like get readjusted and everything to like what's currently going on. So yeah. like, you, you, it's like, you're not overthinking every single thing because you, yeah. you, you know so much. At the end of the day, you know? bro, the market's going up or it's going down. Like, yeah, or sideways, it's, it's, sideways <laughs> and just you know being patient. I mean? yeah. It's just what happens in between your execution and when the trade either uh, hits target or get, you get stopped at. Yeah. That's where most people mess up. But also um, being open to a, going sideways for a couple of days yeah. Yeah. or like a week or so, you know, because well, I think it's interesting what also. you said though, in terms of getting into a rut and is that your sort of procedure then when you get in a rut, just kind of simplify, go you back? have to bro, because um, there's times that like, you know, I like, I have like my workflow and there's certain times that like I'm missing two things out of that workflow that, that messes up everything. 
you know? So going back to like the more simple stuff, I kind of like fix what, like what's missing in that workflow. Definitely. So every now and again. Yeah, every how about yourself, bro? What, what happens when you get into one of those trading ruts? It really depends on the amount of money that I've lost over the span of that potential losing streak. Um, it and it be, really had to be like a big loss. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It really just depends on the amount of money that I lost. If it's like normal losses that it's like, okay, well, you know, I'm trying to keep trading through it. Like I trust my system. I trust my strategy. Correct. But honestly, it also comes down to me looking back at the results and really analyzing, okay, well, am I over trading? Am I over complicating things? Because that's another point that I was actually going to add on. Like some of my best trades, my biggest trades too, in terms of not just our multiple, but in, from a monetary perspective, um, have been the simplest trades. Mm -hmm. And my shittiest trades have been the ones where I try and really overcomplicate it and I really try and combine as many things as I possibly can and just really overanalyzing price action have always been my worst trades, which is quite interesting to see. But for me to like, to really get out of one of those like ruts or losing streak, it really just ultimately depends on going back and analyzing um, the last few trades that I've taken and just going over what I'm essentially doing wrong, if I'm doing anything wrong, and if I am doing something wrong, say, okay, let's cut it right away. Or if not, it's like, all right, well, I'm gonna keep <coughs> it through. There's, I have no other option, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, I think for me, it's like the trading frequency or just like taking a break. And again, if it's a deflating loss, mm -hmm. like take like a couple of days off, you know? Even mm -hmm. going into the weekend, if you take, let's say if you take a huge loss on Wednesday, take Thursday, Friday off, and then you have at least some time to reset before the next week. But yeah, it's kind of getting back to the basics. Like you have to have, a checklist that you're checking off every time you're sitting down in the market. I find like my biggest drawdown periods is like when I'm missing parts of that checklist. Like if yeah. I'm not doing the analysis or if I'm mismanaging my trades, like as far as position sizing or moving my stops, like for, you know, widening my stops at times or tightening too, too much yep. or scaling in too much or scaling out too fast. It's like, just kind of go back to basics where you're not managing the trade so much. Yeah. Like just yeah, yeah, yeah. entry, just, Set yeah, <laughs> I might um, just want to add in also. Um, there's, I mean, I, I think this also like I mean, I'm not too sure if, if, if y'all do this also, but I like to keep like my charts kind of messy at times because you know like it looks good, but at the same time like I think if my charts are too messy, I tend to like lose track at times. Mm -hmm. So having a loss, I got to clear off my, like my entire chart. I have to mm -hmm. because that way I think I could um. Re like reset. Yeah, reset everything, like um, change, like not even change my bias, but make sure that, that my bias is as it should be. Because if it's too messy, I have one set bias the entire time. I have one TP in mind, only that TP. I, I see nothing else. And it might never ever even get there until I clear it off and I'm like, oh, what the fuck? It was in the other direction the, <laughs> the entire time, you know? But I think it takes, um, it takes actually clearing off your entire chart every now and again to kind of like, you know, get that little yeah. reset to kind of like to make sure that, that that your bias is as it should be because it could easily get um, conflicted and everything based on how messy your, your um, chart is and everything. I actually yeah. do it like uh, at the start of every week. So I'll clear off my chart entirely and just start from scratch. Yeah. 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 I, do, nah. I hit that trash I'm can button on trading view all the yeah. time, bro. I hit that like nah. every day. Now, I, I don't. Use, after every loss, yeah. like. No, no, no. I, usually, I, don't, I don't have much on the screen, bro, like to be honest. But mine's, my strategy is super simple. But Really like the way, like, so if I go into a drawdown, I just cut risk. Like, so my risk management, like, let's say if I'm, if I go anywhere below like my starting balance for a set period of time, like for the month, right? Say, then I'll cut my risk in half, right? So that, it, you know, if I start going on a losing streak, it's really not gonna do too much, you know? Um, usually what I'll always do is just kind of review and be like, kind of like what you said, am I, okay, is this like normal losses or are you being an idiot, right? <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, most of the time, like if I go on a losing streak, I'll be able to find something where if it's like, if it's enough to where I'm like analyzing it, I can almost always go back and be like, okay, yeah. Like, yeah. What are you doing, bro? I you feel like I mean? that's what like, people don't do, though. I feel like nah, people don't look really. at like the, uh, to me, there's a big difference between going back onto whatever trading platform you're on and looking at your trades and saying, OK, yeah, I lost this many trades. I lost that many trades. I won this many trades and actually having a structured journal, because for me nowadays, especially too, like for me to be able to analyze all the trades that I'm taking, I need to see not just screenshots, but especially with like Tradezilla. It's so helpful nowadays because you there's an interactive chart like I need to go back into that and see, okay, is this normal or am I doing something that is causing these losses on purpose? That's what a lot of people don't do. Just like a regular business would have its business structure and a business plan. I feel like that's what a lot of people neglect when it comes to trading because they just think, all right, cool, I just gotta come in, press buy, sell. I could see all my trade history here. Like I don't have to keep track of anything. And for me, that's what really took me to like that next level of seeing like those big trading days and really understanding what market conditions I want to start sizing in on mm. and what market conditions I want to start taking money off of the table too, you know? So that was a big 
portion of that for me too. Yeah. I feel like that's why a lot of people going back to you. Uh, I think it was I don't know. I think it was his question. Uh, uh, was your question when he was talking about why do you think like a lot of those people can't get past that, like that yeah. critiquing uh, error? Yeah, 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 I feel yeah. like that's a big portion that's missing for them. All, right? yeah. No. yeah, I wouldn't it's, even say journaling. I would say more just keeping track of your own statistics and understanding why you're taking these trades. That's why. Yeah, yeah accountability is real because I it's think like, I'm one of those people. Yeah, 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 yeah. because because I. I don't keep track of like my trades like in a journal, but at the same time, like I'm I'm working towards that, because um, I think there, there's certain times like like when I'm in that like that rut and everything else, mm -hmm. I don't understand why. Yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah. know, so trying to actually just be a bit more, a bit Makes more it organized. Yeah, exactly. Right, but it's trying to actually just get it. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Like yeah. A big win, and they broke all the rules, and then be like, that was a good trade. Yeah. 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 I also but, feel like a lot of people can't put the accountability on themselves too. It's easier to say, you know what. I'm in a losing streak now. It's because Jerome Powell. You know what? He yeah, wore the yeah, wrong yeah, fucking yeah. tie today. Yeah. That's why I'm losing, yeah. bro. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. The economy's doing shit. Or you know what? The strategy that I learned just doesn't work. Instead, they should be pointing the finger at themselves. Yeah. Like, okay, yeah. where am I fucking up on? Mm -hmm. You know, especially in trading, like, you have to be open with yourself to be able to improve that way because yeah. a lot of people don't have that accountability in themselves. Just like if you'd work at any Fortune 500 company, bro, if you're fucking up and you're costing this company tens of thousands of dollars, you're going to get fired quick. But in trading, like it doesn't really work that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because um, like like my um more organized way of trying to actually get organized is just like every single time that I have like a nice profitable day, immediate withdrawal. Immediate yeah, withdrawal. like I don't even wait anymore. I agree with you. Because I think even like building an account is at times overrated as well. Because like there's times that, that you'll build an account and then all of a sudden it drops back down to like a an, an area that's kind of like not really break even, but at the same time a bit uncomfortable. That you kind of like just gave all that money away that that you just made. Yeah, yeah you know? and it's more detrimental when you yeah. do take like those big losses too. And I feel like a lot of people are just too married on the idea of like, all right, I want to turn like a million dollars to five million dollars versus bro, if you put call it 10 grand into an account and you could withdraw yep. consistently, yep. bro, by the end of the PL, you would have turned <clears throat> those 10 grand into Correct. 100 grand. You may only have 20 grand in the account, but you've withdrawn $70,000 well, along the way. Now it's exactly. Money, right? You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. But, yeah, but, yeah but, at the yeah. same time, I think this is very, very important to kind of like just like, you know, pay yourself very, very often because like there's times that you might get into the habit of just trying to just build it to a million dollars. You know, mm -hmm. like that, that million dollar mark is always everyone's first ideal number. Yeah. You know? yeah, like yeah, yeah. I want to build it to a million, a hundred thousand to a million. Like you can withdraw a thousand times and everything else, but eventually withdraw up to a million dollars, yeah. you know, yeah, but yeah, not yeah. make it feel like you, that all has to be at risk in the account 24 yeah, seven. Yeah. It yeah, yeah, makes yeah. sense. For me, for sure. brokers, they don't even insure your money. So. Oh yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. And for me, when I don't withdraw and I find myself like going through the, these huge winning streaks and I've noticed I haven't taken one single withdrawal, I lose like full respect of all of the money that's in the account. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't mind taking like these huge risks in the yeah. market versus like after I do take that, that 50, $60,000 loss, I'm like, bro, what the fuck am I doing? Bro? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I could have yeah, went on vacation. Yeah, yeah bro, I could have done this, this, I could have paid that. Could have yeah. done that, could have bought on this watch. It's like, okay, I made 50K. Like, yeah, know, yeah, like if you deposit, money, right? yeah, yeah, if you deposit 50 grand in your account, now you see a quarter million, you're like, yeah. all right, I want to keep going. Let me take a yeah. $25, $30,000 risk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now versus like, all right, you know what? Let me just chill, let me withdraw. I like actually paying yourself along the way. Like weekly yeah. withdrawals to me now is like super crucial because I can hold myself accountable to making sure like I don't, lose respect for the money I do have inside of my trading account so I don't come to a point in a situation where I'm willing to risk like half of that account on just a few positions yeah you know I think that's one of the benefits though of, of trading personal capital oh, obviously 100%. with the firms you you're told when you can withdraw yeah. versus obviously being able to choose when you withdraw mm -hmm. but that kind of leads on to another question though in terms of fixed risk or dynamic risk because I know there's always the debate of people like just risk one percent versus those who sort of just have open. And it was very interesting for ages. I used to think you can only be profitable if you really do a fixed risk. I did, I really did. And then thankfully through the podcast, I've been speaking to so many traders and some of the best traders really have had their best profitable trades because they know when to size up mm -hmm. on those trades that they can size off. Yeah, like um, I have a, a big thing that I always say, like a person that's that's open to only risking 1%, they're, they're, they don't want to make money. Yeah. I feel Simple like- Simple as that. For me, I feel like it's very situational. It's what are your goals? Because if you're going to tell me, all right, you know what? I want to be managing a $10 million portfolio. I, for me, I don't feel like you need to risk more than 1% or 2%. But then again, like if you're just trading your own personal capital, why not actually go dynamic with the risk and size in Correct. on those trades that could give you that huge R multiple? Mm -hmm. If you're going to tell me I'm going to risk 50 grand on a trade to potentially make five, six, seven hundred k, I'm going to do it. Yeah, you that know? makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes all the sense. But if you have you know, a huge trading account, 
there's no real need because 1% is 20, 30, 40,000 dollars. You know, so I feel like it's very situational, but at the same time, like if you're trying to make money in the markets and you're not somebody who can just go ahead and do that, then it kind of makes no sense. And at the same time, you do want to be sizing in um, and you want to be sizing in heavy on those opportunities that are going to give you that big R multiple, mm -hmm. you know, and you look at a lot of these traders and it's like they know when to size in at the right times and they know when to take size off of the table. Mm -hmm. And that's where the real money comes. It's not really always just like one fixed risk versus like on prop firms like. I mean, you're kind of fucked, especially when you just start to fund the account. Yeah, but that, that's the thing, though. Like, with props, you have no choice. Yeah. Like, yeah. You, you have no control over anything. Like, it's not your money, you know? That's why it's very important to, like, you know, make your, your money on a prop and then do your own thing also. Because at the same time, like, that's when you could actually showcase your true skill at, at that point. That's not so um, based on, like, the parameters and that kind of stuff. So, like, you, you could really see how good you are with your own money and everything else because you could pretty much, like... Um, fluctuate with the risk and all all these other things, the assets, like times a day, like holding over the weekend, like you can pretty much do all that. With a prop account, you are caged in. Yep. But just not your money. Yeah. yeah. So and would you pay sense. two thousand dollars for three hundred K, four hundred K now it's, it's not your money. It's just a tool. It's not your money. Yeah. It's just it, a tool. If it's your money, you can go as crazy as you want to. That's what it is. Like that trading has that kind of ability with the leverage and everything that I also offering. feel like it's more rewarding when you do hit that withdraw button and you do make more money than you invested in your trading account with your own personal capital yeah. than with the prop because again like bro it's it's just it's 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 pixie dust is really <clears> what <throat> it is bro you know you put six hundred dollars and you got a hundred thousand dollar account it's way more rewarding for me in my opinion when you could withdraw at any point in time like i remember there was one day where it was my boy's birthday and i had made like a hundred thirty thousand dollars on some us 30 shorts bro i withdrew thirty thousand dollars and went and bought him a watch you can't do that on a prop True, account yeah. You can't. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's no. True. You, yeah, might have, you might have to wait like well, you know, like a week or so. <laughs> <laughs> and that's if they want to pay to you. That's if they want to pay to you. I totally agree when it comes to like sizing in. I, I think it comes down to experience too, because a lot of people they just don't they don't have the screen time and they haven't traded that setup enough to know like what's the A plus setup to size in. So it seems like they're always sizing in on every trade. Like this trade looks like it's gonna go. No. I'm sizing <laughs> in on this one. Yeah. And the way I size in is not like opening myself to more risk. Like I'll start out, let's say if I wanna like really size into a trade, I'll try and make that initial entry like at least adjust my stop to take some of the open risk off Correct. before Correct. I size in. Yeah, yeah. And then if the trade is really moving in your favor, it's allowing you more and more opportunities to size in without opening yourself up to more risk. Yeah, because like you're, those you're already, you have that, the equity. You already have yeah, equity, yeah, exactly. exactly. You have the positive equity. That are huge uh, risk reward. And those oh are yeah. That, like come with experience. So I always recommend in my opinion, the way I was trading prop was everybody knows like I was doing a quarter percent risk, but across like 20 different accounts, right? So like I would start at a quarter percent and add a quarter percent, add a quarter percent. But at the same time, I was adjusting my stops. And then before you know it, it's a six figure trade. That's crazy. Right? But it's like, it's really the capital that's doing all the work. It doesn't have anything to do with like how much risk I'm putting on, right? Especially not on your very first entry, your very first yeah, position. Yeah. That's more, yeah. yeah. position is like a feeler because if yep. it goes against you straight away and you're on five, you got 5% risk on, like what do you do now? Like, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. You you're clapped. No, you, you know, like you some those kind of trades I've always loved though. That's as far as like doing like a 0 0.01 on 30, you know, just do your thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just you know what I'm saying? And then you kind of like put your your true lots and, yeah. and that kind of stuff on it. So like, I think the um, teaser, right? Yeah, yeah, just the, what is it called? A fueler. Yeah. Oh, yeah, like a fueler is like probably like, like one of the most important things because it, it makes you like not have to urge to like want to put like a big, a, like a big lot size immediately because that trade might go yeah, wrong. Those, those trades and that might, might be like red. unnecessary as loss. As soon as you put it on, it all of a sudden it's red. Those are the worst trades ever. Cause what do you yeah. guys? I, what do you guys feel about the people who let's say they do take a trade? And the trade's halfway to their stop loss, and they add. Yeah, that's the worst. So never add to a loser. Never, yeah. add, to a loser. never yeah. add to a loser. Like, like that, pretty much is like pouring gas on the fire at that point. You know, it's yeah. crazy, isn't it? It gets yeah. messy. Yeah, it gets it's, messy. So it's at the same time, bad habits too. Though that's 100%. the worst thing. Like I always yeah. say, like, yeah. your stops, you're like, oh, this one's gonna work. You well, know? when people do shit like that, they're basically telling themselves like. I'm, I don't take this seriously. Like 100%. whether they lie to themselves and tell them, oh, this is just, you know, but it's, you're basically affirming like that you're not going to treat this like a real business, right? It's like you mm -hmm. were saying, like those, most people don't want to like, you know, reflect or journal. And it's not to say like maybe that's required, but at the end of the day, whenever you get that persona of somebody who just like Gamble. doesn't really, you know, yeah. treat it seriously, you, well, you're not going to make serious money off. I mean, you might, you know, you might, there are outliers and stuff, you know, but it's like, uh, the bad habits and the tilt you go on, in my opinion, are worse than like, oh, that trade. Like, how much money you lose in this trade? Well, 
you know, you can you get look that at it as a singular trade. But those people that sample size, those people that come in one area, you're not going to keep adding into it. Like you're adding, yeah. you know, fuel to the fire. Yeah. I'm saying those people that actually come out of that that crazy trade with the win, I think that money that they just won doesn't even last either. Honestly. It's a dopamine yeah, the market hit. Takes you know? it back. Yeah, yeah like they all give it back to the market. It's, like do- it's, it's, it's an injection of dopamine yeah. is what it is. It's yeah. rewarding bad behavior. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah no, I've seen sure. it um, many times over the yeah, years. Actually, like it's um, it it looks good, <laughs> but it never lasts, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. It never lasts. Yeah. Like, the idea of it is better than what it actually is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I went through. Like, that's literally because, like, when I started, I just put a bunch of money into crypto and then, like, well, a bunch to me at that time. And it, it like, you know, multiplied. And I was like, oh, OK. And it made me not care because I never withdrew any of it, bro. Like, I mean, I would pull out some money to, like, yeah, pay like, for, like, living expenses. Stuff, yeah. But like you guys were saying, I was like, oh, you know, I'm going to flip this to a mill. Right. That was like what was in my a head mill, yeah, was a mill. Right. And I slowly but surely round tripped almost all of it. You heard about you the story I mean? of the Dogecoin guy? The, yeah, had, yeah, yeah. He had like some crazy oh, yeah, amount. Yeah, yeah, he had emptied credit cards. I think sold some shit. Invested like three hundred k. It was a mortgage. He he was, oh, he, he took out a mortgage. He, he took out a mortgage and then he lost everything. God, yeah, he, he, he like, I think his Dogecoin turned into like two or three million, and he still apparently he still isn't close to this day. I think like the yeah. uh, the one of the owner or like the founders or something of Dogecoin went through like something similar. Like mm. he he's something crazy like that. not like yeah yeah like it was something crazy not like he went on a mortgage but he round tripped all of it. Yeah, I don't know that I don't understand. I would have on their profit target right like yeah. they think it's gonna go to a certain level and they just completely just disregard any type of risk management. No no but there's times that it actually does get crazy but they just want to keep on going and keep on going and keep on going because I think they just don't have enough investing experience to even understand that like you know it might not keep on going yeah. you know. And then just but press. That's like yeah. Validation, right? Like where yeah. The idea is no longer valid. No, no. I think they a lot of it's like money. relationship with money too, because some people like one person is going to get way more excited or way more hurt over l- losing X amount of money than they really should at that time. Like they don't realize, like, okay, this isn't you know the home run, like the last trade I'm ever going to take. You know what I mean? Like a lot of people, they get those first big wins or when they start sizing up, they start getting like that that greed almost. Like they start seeing big numbers, they're like, oh, okay, this is gonna keep going and then wipe it all out. Like that's something I've seen a lot of people do too. Yeah. That's something I've done as well yeah, whenever yeah, I was yeah, starting, yeah, you know. Definitely. But off um, the back of that same concept though, like you know, you know people adding to their losers. Um, there's also people who just <clears> enter <throat> the markets without confirmation, for example. Are you guys someone are you guys, you know, in terms of your strategies or looking to enter, is that what you're looking to do? Are you looking to see some form of confirmation in the market before you enter? Or are you just entering while it's say just coming towards a level? So th- there's times that, mm-hmm. I mean, um, you know, the fear of missing out, like those trades, definitely just go in. And instant re- regret on, on those trades, right? Because you kind of enter the market knowing like, you know what, this is gonna be a loss, you know? And like, <laughs> yeah. you kind of already know, you know? But um, there's times that, that, that you, can, you, you enter your office nice and easy, calm and collected, you analyze first and that kind of stuff and then you wait for these confirmations. That's when um, you have like the the, um, the most amount of confidence and everything else to actually trade good for that day, you know. But at the same time, like I think nowadays I try to actually wait even a day and everything else. Plus, forward marks actually get to a certain zone and then I start to trade, not just I get on and then a couple lines up. Uh, I mean, no, I I wait it out and then see like wait until it gets like certain price and that kind of stuff and then I start to trade. Yeah, no, I yeah. would never start taking positions on if I don't see my setup. Yeah. That, if my setup hasn't informed yet. I know there's people that take the trades like anticipating, okay, if price right. is coming up to this level, we're going to see a bounce off of this level. But that's the problem. They said, we're going to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You never yeah. know. It's never guaranteed. It's, it's, it's still a probability. So I'd rather see the confirmation first that we've gotten some form of a rejection. There's some form of buying pressure, some form of selling pressure in this area. And then I'll get in. Yeah. There are some people that just um, don't wait for candle closes. Yeah. Just like, jump the like gun. The candle just, it pushed down first. Yeah. It's not even close. And then it get in. And then all of a sudden, you know, that was a huge thing I had to learn was like the candle close candle is like close. the only thing that matters. Because like even in the last ten minutes, that candle could flip. Yeah, candle close. And then all of a sudden, yeah. you're like, yeah, because that's the oh. that's the data solidifying itself. Correct. Yeah, correct, yeah correct. no, hundred percent. And that's like uh, that's even a big part of ICT too. Like is like using candle wicks and closures. Like it's trying to not have that happen. Like correct. have the inverse of that. Like buy on that wick that people are trying to sell on because they think it's going to be a breakout. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, in terms of like people that just like uh, like I see it too. Like all because I I go through everybody's strategy. Like I actually like, will re- review my students like journals and stuff and sometimes seeing this, the stuff that people do is, is insane. Mm-hmm. Like literally they'll be like, okay, well here is the target, you know, um, price was moving in that direction. So, you know, I entered a trade and, mm-hmm. and I thought this, you know what I mean? There's just like no system to it. Yeah. But I think like uh, some kind of confirmation, cause it's like, I feel like, you know, whether it's like ICT price action trading, whatever you, you're using, there's like the idea 
and like your zone, and then there's the confirmation, like the trigger, right? Yeah. Like, you know what correct, I mean? Correct. And 100%. I think every good strategy has that, like kind of that that two piece, you know what I mean? Yeah. Structure yep. to it. Like it's hard to sell a market that's going up, but you have to know when to sell the market. Like yeah. if it's just because blasting. Timing is also everything in trading too. It's not just about like what, because you could be right on the direction, but if you're wrong on the timing, you're gonna lose money. I mean, to sell the market while it's going up at times, like if you think about it, like you're one person going like, going against an entire army. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of crazy, you know? So people I think, um, because, man. no, but people are, are just trying to anticipate something that, that's not there. Yeah, yeah. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like they, they want it to be there, but at the same time, like they might have, have to wait like another. The, the especially market, the yeah. futures yeah. market like, too. to turn around a little bit, you know what I mean? Yeah, but, but, but even that, now it's better to, to like wait for confirmation on like a bigger time from like age four or daily and that kind of mm -hmm. stuff before you say, you know what, it's valid. Because if it's trying to, to um, turn around on the five or, or like the 15, it's not really enough data to even like say that it's ready to even turn around yet, you know? Yeah, but some people actually get day, just close down yeah and then all, all of a sudden yeah. shoot right shoot yeah, yeah. yeah. people try to confirm a daily level with like a five minute chart it's like you're yeah no you can't compare it looks yeah. tempting it's but, like, but it's not worth yeah. it. looking at the bid ask line and figuring out like all right if i enter the position what's my entry going to look like yeah. then like when it comes to fomo like when that market is just plummeting and you want to enter position it's like well that entry actually looks terrible when you go back and look at it. You're like, yeah. why am I in this trade right now? Yeah, because um, like even like at one point, like um, you know, I think it was the market maker method that there was like um, three pushes and then drop. Listen, like when, like when people were so stuck on like that theory, I've seen people um enter the uh, market on that third push. All of a sudden, it's gonna push for, the, for like another two months. Yeah, you know, yeah. because they were so like like yo. It has, it has to go down. Yeah. It doesn't really have to, to do anything, actually. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you and start then, imposing rule on the markets, you're going to get very humble. Even yeah, when you yeah, do yeah. everything right, you still can get wrong all the time. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, that's the yeah. thing, yeah, too, yeah, even yeah. with confirmation. Like, and that's things, where people like, start like, strategy hopping, too, because they're like, bro, this shit doesn't work. It doesn't work, work yeah. Yeah. You exactly. could wait for every single confirmation you have written out on your checklist, and there's going to be times where it still doesn't work. Yeah. You could yeah. lose a whole week doing that. And I think people have the problem accepting that. can remain irrational longer than you can remain solvent. 100%. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's and for and, and do you have enough money yeah. left in your account <laughs> when it's ready? You know, that's the thing. You just got to survive those losing streaks. Yeah. That's really what it comes down to at the end of the day, making sure your wins are way bigger than what your losses actually are and don't and make sure your losses don't spin out of control. Yeah, mm -hmm. now cutting risk and drawdown for me is like, I, I, I started doing that actually, I can't remember who originally told me to do that, but like if, and it's not even just like starting account balance, it's like whatever I started that month with, you know what I mean? And that will, that's helped me like avoid so many loser streaks. Like we're like, yeah, I went on, a, like last August, I went on a loser streak, but I lost like 12 trades in a row, mm -hmm. right? But it really didn't hurt that bad. Like it hurt more just like mentally, like, oh, like, you know what I mean? Like wasn't even really the money at that point. It was just like, not wanting to be wrong. It was small trades or something? Or? Yeah, no, I mean, they were, I mean, it, the money hurt, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, but it wasn't, that wasn't the worst part of it, so to speak. It was more like, damn, like, that's the worst losing streak I've been on. But since I was cutting my risk, it, it really wasn't that big of a deal. Like, yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, I mean, it still yeah. sucked, but, Some you know. People get frustrated on, like, that third or fourth loss and then size up, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then their equity curve just steepens and it gets sharper yeah. on, the de on the decline. decline yeah, it's yeah. like, yeah, if you're on a losing streak, you just got to hit a base hit, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, and I go back to those like low R, but then after that, literally, like I kind of got back in the flow of it and I had my best month after that. So it was just like, you know, um, but I think that the reason I was able to do that is I kept my mind right. Like I wasn't yeah. like, you know what I mean? If I would have had a Irrational. huge financial loss, I would have just, yeah. like, damn, like, you know, you just erase so much. But if it's not, you know, nothing that you can't come back from. How often have you guys seen that, like in your journeys where you've had like a, a bad losing streak, but then actually had one of the best ones, you know, best winning <gasps> ones afterwards? Pretty often. Yeah, yeah. Always, always, yeah it's it always happens actually. Like yeah. Yeah. I think like, like probably like, like, my, like my most delusional moment, I'm pretty sure you guys had, had, had this at one point in time also, like my, like, like my most delusional moment was probably back in 2015. I'm on, I'm on the couch, all right? I know my credit card number by heart. <laughs> That's dangerous. <laughs> it's a star and all. Yeah, right? And then, um, yeah, so like I had like a 3K account, right? Um, and then pretty much, I had actually a thousand dollar account. I was trading and that kind of stuff. Um, I took a huge hit. I, I, I blew the account in like about, I think, a couple of days and everything, right? I was, I'm, that's like th that time period where I'm on the couch for days and days and days studying and that kind of stuff, right? All of a sudden that account is blowing. I log, I log back on to the um, account, I load up another thousand dollars, right? My, my, my bank holds it. I call the bank real quick. Blah, 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 I do everything. <laughs> deposit. All of a sudden, deposit again. Blown again. Um, I do that about like three, four times actually before I had to sit back like, hold on, wait. What the fuck am I doing right now? And you're taking control of, bro. Yo, like, like, it does that, bro. It was like, it was like a, I was yeah. delusional. Like, yeah. I, I didn't know what was going on. But like, it took me to like lose that much money at that sh short amount of time to even think like, yo, like, 
like this can get crazy real quick yeah. actually you know yeah man but like, no um, respect for the risk right none, yeah. like and you probably none. know just yeah. from being like in the prop space i mean there's people that have lost like 100 accounts before they even pass yeah, 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 yeah. to yeah, me that's, that's crazy yeah. you blow so, challenge after challenge after challenge after yeah. challenge after challenge you get one payout and just completely ignore all the mistakes yeah, yeah, you yeah, did. Yeah. You have to know like like when you're going too far in, yeah. and then like take take that step back and reanalyze everything, and then you know try yeah. to go try to go back in eventually. You know, I always tell people like uh, I'm like, would, would you feel comfortable like explaining what you're doing to like your partner, like your your girl or something? That's what I always tell people because I'm like, <laughs> yeah. would you honestly though? They're not involved. I mean? People are like, people are like <laughs> no, no, of course not, of course not. But I'm saying like you know like if you're like oh like yeah I just have how's trading been going? Oh well I actually just blew like 15 prop accounts. You know, I'm still doing like you. Know, then when you say it like that, it sounds crazy. Not not for that reason, but like in the in the sense that like. Shit, babe. You know, I think I might get a second mortgage. Just put yeah, it yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like like <laughs> saying it out problem. loud. Would saying it out loud to like it Putting could be your parents or it could be yeah. your homie, whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? Like just a, another person. Yeah. Like just verbalizing it. How does that sound? If it sounds like crazy, like okay, maybe you should stay, you know reconsider what yeah. the hell you're doing. You know? Yeah, hundred percent. Like I can um, agree with that. Yeah, yeah. Because that's because like when you and every time I say it, there's like. Well, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause it's like when you, if you have to verbalize it, then it's like accountability too. That's yeah, why yeah. Tradezella or just some kind of dashboard, Adrenaline. just yeah. a dashboard. Like, yeah. oh, like you could see that win rate dropping drastically. You could see the number dropping. You could see it from not, like a third person point of view almost. And yeah, especially true. with props too. Cause the thing with props is like people, you know, when they buy that account, that account's like, oh, it's forgotten. Yeah, yeah. true. But true. if you have yeah, everything yeah, yeah. linked to your Tradezella, it's not forgotten. It's not forgotten. It shows everything. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So like now you can really like have to, to log into that and look <clears> at it. You know what I mean? If you, if you just blow prop accounts and you just throw them away, like your mind will just kind of like, oh, push that to the side. Yeah. yeah. Like you said, oh, I got the payout. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Post it up. Post it the, the payout. That, that's <laughs> the thing, bro. It's like that's also what's dangerous too is because like, bro, you could blow like a thousand or I don't want to say a thousand. Let's, let's be more realistic. You could blow five 1K accounts, yeah. right? Trying to flip it. Then you actually flip 5,000 to 10,000 and you completely forget about why you even blew those first okay. accounts to begin with. And that's what's dangerous. And people could get stuck in that cycle because yeah. now you blown that 10k account you haven't even taken one single withdrawal it's like mm -hmm. a combination of so many different things and so many different people are going to find themselves in so many different situations you have to analyze your situation and how you can improve and again the only way to do that is through self-accountability mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah you yeah, know 100 percent, bro 100 percent. I, I think you have to um have that time period to just like sit back and reflect and understand like what the hell is going on yeah, like, yeah, you, know, you get tunnel vision. You have to, yeah. yeah. You get crazy. And like, real quick, yeah. You, exactly, can't com yeah. you can't be comparing yourself to, to other people, too. You have to literally only sit and talk to yourself and analyze your situation, how you can improve your situation. You can't just randomly, because social media, I mean, it could be such a great thing, but it's such a dangerous thing at the same time because it's like you could easily go on and say, you know what? I had a $1,000 day today. It was absolutely phenomenal. Little, you know, you have 15 grand in your trading account. This other guy posted, oh, I just made 30K today. It's like, Okay, well now I'm gonna size up tomorrow no, to try and make yeah, more on that yeah, same yeah. trade. So on, you yeah, on, on, on the same, same move. Exactly, yeah, on yeah, the yeah, same, same move, trade, bro. It, yeah, because there'll be so many people. Because I trade live with my people and my students, and you know there'll be days where I make twenty thousand dollars, and it's like, oh, cool, I just made five hundred bucks. It's like, bro, we're on two completely different yeah, paths. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. just focus on what you are. I don't like sharing profits, but I'm, I do it at the same time to kind of be <clears> transparent about it because I started where they were, right? Like, mm -hmm. if you put in the work, you can get to whatever level you want to get to. Yeah. It's just like it's kind of hard to balance it out and obviously like there's always gonna be haters out there like i don't even sell a product right now and people are calling me a scammer it's like i don't <laughs> no, know i feel like that's hey, just hey, I feel no, like, no 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 i'll like, speak for everybody it comes with the territory bro. yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah no. no but i feel like <laughs> you get payouts i'm like you can check my affiliate link i've made like 800 bucks like yeah. I don't, i'm not promoting they, affiliate they, they, no, they thought the no, prop certificate that's thing also like, that's, like, what, that's like, what people yeah, said yeah, about my ftmo payout too why i feel ashamed you know what they said like like why i feel ashamed to be an affiliate though, yeah. because like nowadays, yeah. like, it seems like everybody's an affiliate now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like now, it, now, it now it's a cool yeah. thing. Yeah. Back then, it was like a you're an affiliate. Oh, like you're a scammer. Scam, Me, scam. Immediately, you nowadays, make a dollar other than trading. Yeah. Scam. It's like yeah. bro, and, you ain't got bro, no nowadays. It's cool. Like it's that's like, the what? thing, bro. Like, if you make any single cent anywhere else that's yeah, outside yeah. of trading, oh, it's a scam. Yeah, scam. It's, like, it's a scam. It's like, like, am I a scam or am I smart? That's what I'm saying. Like you don't like understand that. Like people don't understand that. Like okay. Like, it is not sensible to just sit here and say, of I'm gonna learn not. trading and that's gonna be my only income only. forever. Oh my God. Like, bro, bro. come on. When now. you have come all on. these other avenues yeah, that pretty like, much is still based around trading in this whole bunch of other avenues, yeah. you know? It, it, and it makes yeah. people that think like everything in trading should be taught for free. It's oh, like, yeah, of course. this yeah, is like the hardest true. industry in the world. To satisfy. How, who else are you gonna go out there and get somebody to sit down with you one on one to teach you 
for free. ICT is right? like, to blame for that one right yeah, now. Yeah, I mean, like, that's the thing is, like, yeah, he's, yeah there's a just, bunch of free stuff out there, but yeah. there are people that are charging. There's nothing wrong with that. Like, Remember, on YouTube, right, people but, always say YouTube first, right? But on YouTube, oh, everything is disorganized. So, like, you're, yep. you're, you're, you're literally in an encyclopedia, yeah. encyclopedia of just information, yeah, right? Yeah. On a course, like, it's organized, you know? It's not even about, like, organization either. It's just there's so much information out there you can't decipher what information is valuable what information really mm -hmm. isn't that valuable either mm -hmm. who's saying what what well, you know who you should listen to like there's so many different things about that it's just if you want to learn from a specific individual who's put and dedicated their entire life bro they should be able to yeah. charge whatever they like, want to charge yeah. and that's not even with this industry yeah. that's with whatever yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, True. yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, I mean, whatever. you have all, all choice to charge that whatever bro, bro, you want to charge. You, have you guys seen that one app where you where other people are charging like thousands of dollars just to speak to them fifteen minutes, bro? Yeah. That's wild. Literally, was it, was it, was it, yeah. Like you could. Uh, no, I, I forgot what the name of the app is, but it's one bro, of the founders, the CEOs Patrick Bet David is on yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, the that. tapes are on yeah. there. Tapes yeah, charging seventy five, almost eight thousand dollars for ten only minutes only to speak to. I think it's worth it. Yeah, I think it's one hundred percent worth it, bro. If you got to a certain point in life and everything else that that person is not. Why Bro, not, I know, you know people who it. are paying other people thirty, forty thousand dollars for a mastermind. Yeah, and just so oh, the yeah. information, the connections they can get out of it, and yeah. they see those ROIs. Correct, correct. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but it's also the people who aren't willing to invest in their own education mm -hmm. outside of the free stuff that really, you know, it's questionable. Yeah, it's questionable. Not, I say like, serious. if you're making money in some kind of niche, reinvest. Yeah. It is what it is. Like, put money yeah. back into that niche to get more out of it. Mm -hmm. 100%. It comes with the game. Yeah, yeah. And like yeah. learning never stops neither. Like, you know what I mean? You, you should always be open minded. I think a lot of it's an ego thing. Like, a lot of people think, like, oh, I'm not paying that much to do. Like, yeah, like, you bro, know what I mean? It's like, bro, ego. Yeah, exactly. It's like, like you said with the masterminds, there's masterminds out there that are crazy expensive. But it, like, yeah. as long as you, you know, like you go to that, you're going to ROI. As, as long, long as, as you network, just the networking. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, people people look at yeah. that like, oh, he got scammed. He yeah, got as long as it's, it's like, value man. backed and you make yeah. your ROI, bro, it's nothing, bro. Yeah, exactly. A lot of the time, that shit's like going to be paid. And I have a lot of friends in like other niches and everything else that do things completely different than trading that I pretty much paid for, for their product to actually try to learn something. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah me yeah, too. No, same here. Yeah, same me too, here. me too, yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah. Like, because it's a, it's a part of just like making money. Like you shouldn't be scared to spend yeah. money if you're already making money. Like yeah. it's here. But I feel like the majority of people just don't understand that because they come from a completely different background. <clears throat> They're just like, okay, I'm going to go work at this job. I don't have to pay for anything. You know, I yeah, just have my own education already and the education that I'm going to learn at that job versus... Yeah. When you want to network and not even just about networking, it's when you want to learn. Like for me personally, bro, I have no problem going and investing in anything else that's going to give me value. Yeah. I have zero problem doing it because I know I'm going to get my ROI. Especially, I think especially everybody should yeah. want to do that too. Like, yeah. you know, with trading, it's like, you know, that it's like, you know, just like props could be a tool to trading. Well, trading is a tool to life to like start other businesses and like, you know, just expand it and really get, you know, uh, just get your feet wet in other avenues. You yeah, know what I mean? Correct. Like, but but yeah, so many people always think it's if you if you make any other penny than trading, like scam, scam. Yeah. It's just yeah. Yeah. like but you want to have a mentor because like I went through like kind of something what you went through that learning period where I was just stuck learning because I didn't yeah. know who to learn from. Mm -hmm. I couldn't tell if this guy was real, this guy was real. But if you do find somebody that you resonate with, that's all that matters. Like, yeah, exactly. Like professional uh, sports coaches, some of them don't play professionally. That doesn't make them a bad coach. You know yeah, what I mean? No, like yeah. they're just yeah, good at educating. You don't have to be a good trader Scammer. to they teach people. Yeah. Like it's just part of the game. Like you don't have to be, uh, you know, I mean, even the psychology guys, like the top psychologists in the, in the trading space, they're not traders, but they're helping people on a massive level. Like there's huge value there and it doesn't matter if they're like showing you verified track records, this yeah, or that, like it doesn't mean anything no, at the yeah. end of the day. If you're getting results from that person, like that's all that matters, right? Yeah, yeah. and if you are a counts. If Freddie Roach, like he, he literally tried to box and couldn't box and he ended up being like the greatest boxing yeah, coach yeah. of all time. That's yeah. why he, yeah. yeah, that's why he stopped. He literally couldn't fight. Like he just sucked. Like genuine, like he just, not, not that he sucked, he's saying it disrespectful. Like, but, like, but, like, like, but like, you know, yeah, but he just wasn't, it wasn't it, but he loved the game. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, so but there's also so many stories way. that are like that too. How yeah. many coaches are there that don't actually work in the field that they're teaching in? Yeah. We, yeah, just get a bad, like, we just get a bad stigma, though, in the trading industry. It's because it's like, trading, bro. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, it's yeah, also yeah. probably the same thing with people who do sports bets and things along those lines. Yeah, yeah, anything yeah. dealing with, like, a vast amount of money to be made in a, a short amount of time, yeah, it's yeah. definitely going to have, a, like, a, like, bad feedback from every, every single person that doesn't even know about it. I just know? think it's yeah. the educational space nowadays. If you're charging for education, 
Bro, people frown upon that nowadays. It doesn't matter yeah. what industry you're in. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. trading is one thing because I feel like a lot of people just don't understand what trading actually is and that it's more than 100% possible. Only the traders understand that it's more than 100% yeah. possible. Look, yeah. like my ROI on like trading education is way higher than traditional education. Exactly. Like, yeah, dude. 10 oh, times yeah. over. Of course. You could pay for a college class that, that costs the same amount at, yeah. as a course and you're making more money from the course by the end of the next month and everything else than you will ever make in, in like a, a college class in some kind yeah. of way. Yeah, no. You got to pretty much are, complete four years to even like make that one class two not even valuable that, two in some kind of way. I know, I, I, you know? Not even yeah. that. I know you guys been asked this one question too. It's like, all right, well, if you make money trading, why do you have an educational program? Yeah, it's like, it's stupid. It's, first of all, that's a ridiculous question. Not even just yeah. that, bro. Look at Andrew Tate. Bro, he sells a course for 50 bucks, bro. 50 bucks a month. And he's a it's, billion. It's from people, that haven't, <laughs> traded, it's yeah, from people that haven't traded full time, not, not realizing like trading doesn't take that much time. No. And then it's like, all right, well, what am I at? Yeah, I'm not adding anything to society at that point. It's no. like I'm clicking buttons to make money. Yeah, yeah, it's great for me and the people that are around me. You're able to change to me, somebody's life. You're able to help somebody else. That's the biggest thing. Remember, yeah. you're, you're never going to win. Because remember, like, if, you're, if, yeah. if you're the person inside of niche that's pretty much making a, a ton of money, all of a sudden you're a gatekeeper because yeah. you, you aren't teaching. So <laughs> when you are teaching, you're like, now you're a scammer. It's like, you know, it's always going to be like some kind of bad feedback from people. You know, I think one of the biggest things about whether you have a course or any sort of service that then creates an income is that trading, there's no guarantee of how much you can make. So it only makes sense to have some form of other income source that is no, not guaranteed. Either, of course, it's not yeah. guaranteed as well, That's you true, know, yeah. because if, you, if you're not a good teacher, remember, like <laughs> some people are good traders and not good teachers. Yeah, true. So, some people are good teachers and not good traders, like same concept. Right. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like it takes a certain kind of person to, 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 to even become like even decent at both parties. Yeah. And once you are, I feel like then you could eat on both ends. Like, yeah, and, no. and, and that's deserve and that, that's where know? the long term sustainability is. Correct. Yeah. That's why it's like when you see a lot of us who have been doing this for like a while, it's like, do you really think they would still have their teaching business? and or trading if they didn't impact somebody's life in a positive way. Yeah. And it didn't it, get positive it feels, feedback. It feels good to get that testimonial, be like, yo, listen, like I just paid my um car bill. That's you know what I'm saying? Like, best, I just paid yeah. this and I just paid that. Yeah. Yo, yeah. I, yeah, I helped my mother out and that kind of stuff. Like yeah. those kind of things are, are done based off of your impact that you actually offer yeah. to that person. Yeah, you know? 100%. Yeah. No, I got one like literally yesterday. He was just like, yo, I, I finally made more than I made at my job this month. And that was just like a sick one. Cause it's like, obviously it ain't the biggest amount of money, but he just started trading like three or four months ago. And that shit, that, seeing that kind of shit is dope, man. Remember, it's you never about I mean? the big money, bro. It's about, yeah, it's, the, yeah, exactly. it's about the small things. Even yeah. like paying like a phone bill, even yeah. paying like a light bill. Like yeah. it starts with those small bills first and then eventually it comes to a point that you could actually afford to pay more things yeah. based yeah. on that, that one source. So it's yeah. never about yeah. the, remember like people lost track of what is money because everybody's making like a, a four like a, a four figure day five figure day six k yeah. you know what i'm saying like that, that kind yeah of it's, like, it's kind of easy now like too with uh they're losing props. track of like what a dollar means anymore yeah. you know yeah, what i'm saying no, yeah for because sure. no, 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 no it's easy to, it yeah free and to make 300 dollars a day is still a lot of money like when you you, you add it up you yeah, know yeah, when you really and put vice versa and that, that kind of stuff but i think like people like lose track of like what a dollar means because the money comes so fast. Yeah, no. Nah. Well, you know? that, at that point, it really becomes just in, like a number on the screen, right? It is, it is. So that's and when they like have disrespect for the risk level too and they can just lose their entire, but whatever they worked up for. That's why I get it's a grind. mad at myself. Like if, if I have like, like a bad trade, you know, like because that could have been like a vacation. Mm -hmm. That's that, how I always That could have been a car payment. I always or that could have been like a car, some, 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 some car parts, some, some, some new wheels, some, a new turbo kit or some shit. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm yeah. But at the same time, like things that I'm into, like those. Well, that kind of keeps you in check though. Yeah, like understanding does. like, all right, I lost that money. Like that could have, you know, me taking that bad trade could have paid for something. Yeah, yeah, a lot yeah. of people don't look I think, like I think that. Like, you have to. I, th I think like it's already when you're like at a certain point in your trading career, you think about it that way. It's like, oh damn, you know, I, this would have paid for all of this. I would have been good but, for well, this. Well, because you take it seriously now, yeah. you know? Yeah. But yeah. I also um, notice that like whenever I, I have like some things that I'm working towards on like my whiteboard, I trade a lot better because now um, if I'm up like, let's say like $100,000, right? I'm not trying to aim for 150 now because I'm, I'm, I'm like, you know what? 100K could, could, could pay for this, this, or this. All right, you know what? Close. Fuck that. You know, mark it off the list. If I, if I don't have anything on the board, all of a sudden, you know what? Yeah, yeah. Fuck it. it 150. Yeah, yeah. You know what? 200. Whatever. <laughs> Let's do it because at that point it, it gets kind of crazy because now let's say if I'm up 200 and now I close at 110, I gave away 90. Like what the fuck, you know? Yeah. So it makes you a bit more disciplined that with, with, a lot with having goals in mind while you're trading because you kind of like understand like what you're trying to aim for.
you know? Yeah. No, yeah, you always got to work backwards. Like, I always tell people, too, like, when they're first starting, they'll say, like, I'm like, what's your goal? Like, always, it's kind of like a trick question. People always say something crazy. Help like, my mom out, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah like, I want to retire my parents. I want to, you know, uh, quit my job. I want to make X amount of money. I'm like, bro, you, you got to set the goal to just, like, just make $100. Right? Yeah, <laughs> like, so you're jumping way past. You know I have I mean? an issue with that, though. Well, you know, hear, hear me out. Let me finish, oh. though. You got you to work, work backwards from a big goal, but you have to break it down into, like, realistic milestones. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, for somebody just to come in and be like, okay, well, I'm going to make a million, kind of like what we were saying earlier. Anything that's, like, again, a threat against that is going to – it's going to derail somebody because yeah, they're, they're not, not – making enough progress. Yeah, because they're seeing other people make uh, big money, and then they're just not really – they feel like they're not on the right track, Correct. and they start making mistakes. Yeah. But, so I said that I have an issue with, with that one thing because I think it, it becomes so easy as far as it – Yeah. I would say it's – it come it came kind it came kind of fast to retire like parents. Yeah, it came, no, yeah. It came, it, it came kind of fast to um get like that car that you know we we've always wanted that kind of stuff. Like those yeah. kind of goals get knocked off very very quickly. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. Once you get going for sure. Then right. what? Yeah. Oh yeah, you gotta. I mean, you know what I'm saying like, what happens after all those key things are marked off? To me, it's like the lifestyle, but it's like the, it's just like who you are. Like at the end of the day, like you know, you could get whatever you want done, like take care of parents, do all this stuff, and then it's just more about the drive and about about the game. And yeah, like what's gonna feed that, you? That's that's what it is about. No, but like, like what's feeding you after those those things are marked off? Because like your yeah. parents are good, you have money inside the bank, yeah, like no. your kids are good, you have, you have the house that you want, the car that you want, like. For me, it's like, just part of the game is like just constantly level up, right? Because like once yeah. you have that, that big thing, though, like, day, it's like, all right, well, that was pretty easy. But does it have to always be a level up twenty four seven though? No, right? no, no, it's, That's just not what, it's just a life. It's just a life, man. I think it's more just at that point you're making an impact on everybody else, or like you're you're maintaining. Like I feel like it's a it's a bad habit to always feel like you have to level up, level up, level up, level up. It is. It's 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 annoying, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because it, it comes to a point that you're satisfied, also. Well, I think when you once you're financially free, it's like I feel like it's just a rabbit that's hole. That's like that's no. like the most where most people want to get to financially free. Yeah, a lot of people don't need a lot to get that. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. Like you don't need a lot exactly. to get there. Yeah. So like once you hit that, it's like all right, I have to find something else that's gonna like exactly. at least drive my passion. You exactly. Know? Because, because more money is like not the answer, right? Because remember, like. If you're chasing money, you're chasing something that's literally infinite, a Google place, yeah. you know, yeah, like you yeah. can never have enough money or like there's no such thing as having enough. So like you got to get to a point like what number is 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 good for your living, like you're maintaining and, and then your affordability in like your lifestyle overall. Like, like what number is that? And you can't compare yourself to anybody yeah, else either because that's the yeah, problem. That's there's always gonna be, different. there's always going to be somebody with more money always. and then you're going to get yeah. stuck in like this rabbit hole of like, OK, you wanted this car, you wanted this financial goal met. And then you start comparing yourself to other people. It's like, I have nothing. Then yeah, you just yeah. try and continue to keep going. Then you get there. It's and, and it's endless. And you're never going to be satisfied. You're never going to be uh, truly happy at that. that yeah, no. That's Versus what's very important. Being to happy yeah. with Understand that like, this is your own journey. Own and then right? yeah. like, whatever goals that, that you have in mind for yourself, let's accomplish those things. Like, don't even worry about that, that next person that, that just got like a new Lamborghini. You, you just got a brand new Honda. You know what I'm saying? Like, celebrate that. Enjoy that. You know, because at the same time, like, you might about. lose track of like the enjoyment of yeah. that goal. You know, mm -hmm. I used to work at like a private uh, gated golf community, and there was like really high net worth clients there. And the one guy that was worth like 300 mil was like complaining about, uh, like, they were complaining to the people that were like on site or whatever. Like, you guys treat your wealthier clients better than me. This guy's worth 300 mil, mind you. He's talking about like the guy that's worth a billion. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm like. Okay. Bro, you're you are ultra rich. First of all, it's like you're really comp comparing yourself to the guy that has a billion. Like, remember, it's all yeah, relative. yeah, it's all perspective, yeah. right? Yeah, no, yeah, no. Yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's an ego thing. Yeah. One thing that you guys touched on though, which I think is interesting, and I think uh, you know, a lot of people might be listening and be like, yeah, it's easy to say because you guys have money now and you're profitable, etc. But like, what was the reality for you guys when you had like that first big win, that first big amount of money? You know, after chasing it for so long. Because <clears> I remember with me. I felt so flat. Yeah. Like I didn't. Yeah. I felt like my life was gonna change. Yeah. And I just felt so flat, and I was so confused. So what mm -hmm. was that like for you guys? So for for me, um, like it was when I had made like my like my first 30k week back in uh, October, no, November 2016. 30k week in in one week off of uh, I think a 3k count, one week, 30k. It was on UJ H4 time frame, head and shoulder pattern, crazy bullish move, insane. All right. I think I think I had, had about like ten lots in total, all all standards. I scaled in overtime, thirty k in a week, insane. I withdrew that, put it in in Bitcoin and everything. At the time, I had fifty six Bitcoin at the time. Actually, it was fucking crazy. I withdrew it to my bank account. In, instant regret, by the way. But I felt at whole because now I had enough money in my bank account to kind of like not have to worry about bills for the next mm -hmm. year. You know what I'm saying? So like that part was actually good. 
um, everything else was kind of normal again. You know, it was all normal, but like I had one less thing to worry about, which was the um, bills and everything. So I had more time to actually focus on the craft for that next year to kind of like just get better and not have to stress about bills and everything. So t- to me, it felt good, but l- less stress. Like money wasn't even like a thing that I was worried about mm-hmm. for that next year. Okay. No, I can definitely uh, agree with that too. To me, it would be more like I would set a financial goal. Say I would say, okay, I want to make my first $10,000. Once I would get there, I'd feel satisfied because I know like, okay, well, I can cover this, 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 and that for the next X amount of time. Yeah. Then it's the same thing, but once I already had it, it's like, all right, on to the next, you know, now I want 100K. Yeah. And then from 100K, went to a million and then so on and so forth. But it's like, once you accomplish it, after five minutes, bro, things go back to normal. Yeah. Especially in trading. Yeah. Because the money's coming fast because, you know, you just made this, but that, that person just made that. So at the same time, you kind of know that, yo, there's still more money out there. Or that move could have been milked a little bit more and that kind of stuff, you know? So like, I think trading is like one game that always keeps you hungry because you're never ever going to get satisfied knowing that there's more moves that you could have caught if your comprehension level was just a bit more in tune, you know? Because mm-hmm. you could have probably caught one entry, but that, but that person caught three. Like, how the hell did that person catch three now? So, so try, trying to figure that part out, knowing that you could actually been better on that move, you're always going to be in tune with, with wanting to actually get better with, with um, trading in some kind of way. Yeah. I don't think uh, it's like a whole, like a money thing. You know, I feel like just having more money just allows you to have less stress. Yeah. Less stress too, but you're with able finances. to go through life and experience whatever you want, whenever you want, without having to be <clears throat> locked in or tied into anything. You can really just live life on your own terms. I think just like the experiences you can get out of life because of the financial leverage that you have really is the ultimate goal for anybody because materialism is, it's all bullshit really at the end of the day. When you die, you're not going to take nothing with it. But what they're going to be talking about in your funeral is like, oh, you know, you guys remember when we all went and did this, 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 and that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like that's what's more important out of life than, okay, like, I mean, my first million dollars, like, that's it. What are they going to say? Oh, he thought he had a million dollars in his checking account, but the fuck was he doing with his life? You <laughs> yeah, know what I'm saying? Because yeah, no. you'd be surprised at the amount of people that have tens of millions of dollars and you would never know. Mm-hmm. You would never know versus the people that do do that and they take their entire family on a vacation mm-hmm. or they, you know, decide to do X, Y, and Z with it. You know, I feel like that's what it's really more importantly about the journey of getting there too, to me, is what's been more enjoyable. You know, and I think like also like the um, biggest goal for everybody like in financial freedom should, should, should should get to a point that you wake up every single day and not have to check your bank account. And you can enjoy the day as much as you want to, but not feel like you have to even like open up your app to check how much money you have. Yeah. yeah. That's the goal, I, f- I feel like. Because mm-hmm. when you're going through your entire day and everything else, and then, and then you're, you're checking your balance the entire time, I feel like that's kind of stressful. Yeah. Because yeah, now no, you're kind of no. like, you know, you don't know like how, how much life can actually be lived for that day, you know? Yeah. But going through your entire day and just live it up like you know go out to eat go mm-hmm. shop whatever but never check your account that's pretty much a goal like, four thousand right dollar bill at poppy's take don't even worry exactly. about it whatever <laughs> swipe it yeah everything you know? gets better at that point too because every you get to really experience everything like to the yeah, fullest to and the like fullest. Bring, bring everybody around you like that's the most one of yeah. the most rewarding points is like not only when you can do that for you but when you could do that for everybody around you like you know what i mean like your like your family and everything like that was like I think that's like the the true like happiness that most people are after. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You yeah, go yeah, way farther true. than that, but like that's that's like the that's where it's like you're at peace mentally. You know yeah, what like I mean? you're you're giving your family an experience that you know not many families even get to even experience as far as like a nice yeah. dinner. Yeah, no, you know, yeah, for like, sure. Um, a, a certain kind of trip, you know, what I'm saying like a new car. Like a lot of families don't experience those kind of things. So if you're that that um person to to like be that person in your family to, to even like make your family experience those things, live it up. Yeah, you know, no, and that's the that's the up. most most rewarding thing, man. Definitely, like, exactly. like me and my girl was another day, and she was just like, because she's been with me before, like when I was like nothing, you know what I mean? And she was like, you know, this shit, this shit's crazy, like I mean, it really you're, is. You're never nothing. Well, like you know, what I'm saying like whenever we were like financially Less. fucked up, you know what I'm saying? Like we weren't we weren't yeah, doing yeah, good, yeah. I okay. should say. Like we we had like you know not not nothing, but like yeah. damn near it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just crazy. Like you always reflect back and like that. It's like it really is crazy to look back how far you've came. Because like journey. you said. Like you, you made a good point. It's like, okay, what next? Like you always, there's always the, the next thing. You know what I mean? And if you get stuck in that loop, you don't really enjoy, enjoy what you have and Correct. be grateful. And like what's what we were talking about over there, um, it's like, what are you working for? Yeah. It's like, okay, if you just work, work, work all the time and you always have like the next thing, the next hustle, like the next goal, it's just like you're never really enjoying the one you already hit or the last 10 you already hit. Correct, correct, yeah. correct. You know, yeah. you got to take time to reflect on that. So. To, yeah, enjoy that. Yeah, you know? no, 100%. Uh, I guess for me, like, 
I try not to celebrate the highs too much. And I actually, I messaged you, bro, because we played golf right before. Uh, like, I had my first six-figure trade, and you were like, why don't you just hold it a little bit longer? So the next trade, like, it was literally on the last day of the trading year last year. I hit my first six-figure trade, messaged you, and it's like, it was great, you know, like, just having that accomplishment. Because that's something I've always tried to get towards is having, like, that first 10K month. The first 10K month was like, all right, this is feasible for me to actually think about leaving my job. Right, so that's like a, a stepping stone. And then you just keep hitting those milestones. It's the same thing with getting a promotion out of your job. It's like, you, you could celebrate for a little bit, but if you haven't hit that overall goal, it's like, you shouldn't be celebrating it as like the end goal, right? Because at the end of the day, it's like, right, I still have work to do. I think, like the celebration is very important though. Like even yeah. if it's small and everything else, I think it's- I just got a dinner with my wife or something. It's to celebrate every right. single step because you don't know when you're, you're gonna fall off. You know what I'm saying? No, I like, think. Yeah. The the better question is: Is there really an end goal? There never is. No, no, yeah, no. not. And I, that's, even when you you reach that, that top goal, then you have a set of new goals. Yeah. yeah. You know because like yeah. I'm pretty sure everybody here had like a bucket list at one time. Like I went to yeah. like 18. Yeah. All, a lot of those things are marked off. Yeah. Now what? N- now you have to create a whole new list again. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's, it's like a, like a endless you can't dwell on the goal. Past, you know what I mean? Like, I know. Just, yeah. But like there there's never ever like an end goal though. Yeah. Like there's always gonna be new things. Yeah. New experiences. New new people that. You want to meet and that kind of stuff, like so. It's never ever going to end. So I yeah, think that's that's you I also like enjoy no, everything. That's why I feel like there's no end point when you hit that. Like when you hit that first that huge trade or when you leave your job, it's not like it ends there. You know what I mean? It's on to the next. Yeah, exactly. Whatever it is, just life keeps moving. Keep on working. Because and they like you know like that one six figure trade. Now now you can have an, have another and another and another another. It's never going to be a point that that you're satisfied with that six yeah. trades. Yeah yeah yeah. Because. Yeah. If you love the game, day? you're right, gonna cool. stay in the game. Two hundred k day now. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. but I think no. I'm gonna. I would probably have the same emotional like impact from a two hundred k day as I did the hundred k day. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 It's all the That's why I feel like a lot of people are chasing that feeling. It's like I want to hit that huge trade, and then when you hit it, it's like, all right, well, it's yeah, exactly. It's just, that moment is very fleeting. Yeah. 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 Yeah, no, like, and I, uh, whenever I first started, I kind of came up, like, rapidly, and it felt, like, crazy, but then once I actually started trading, and was like, okay, like, now, I, let's see if I can consistently do it, when I finally got to the point where I could, it was almost kind of like, like, what you were saying, it's like, okay, like, what next? Like, yeah. that was the goal, like, just to become profitable, and I was like, okay, now okay, what? Like, now what? Yeah, it's almost kind of like a weird feeling, but then you, you get to the point where it really is, like, boring. Like, I always tell people, like, you know, for the most part, there are definitely times where it's like, you know, it, it, trading's fun and all, but at the end of the day, like trading is not like exciting. It's not as exciting as it was when you were like flipping those first accounts. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. not, you don't know what you're doing. that's what I'm saying. Like, it's not so like then, you know, for me, um, like I don't, I don't ever see myself like fully retiring. Like people like, what, like you were saying, like, what's the number? Like there's definitely numbers where you kind of tone back a little bit probably, exactly, yep, but yep, like, you're yep. never just going to be like, all right, stop. I'm done. Yeah. Like, nah, it's just don't not ask. who I am. Like, it, uh, like yeah. why stop? Yeah, it's just yeah. like a lifestyle, no, bro. No it's, other industry is gonna pay you like how trading pays you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So like yeah. you could probably yeah, try to no venture off a little bit, yeah. but you're gonna come right back to where it yeah, all yeah, started. Yeah. You know? yeah, I always look at this as like this is my active like set of streams, right? Where it's trading, but then it's like of course like you know real estate, like other passive of course, of course. things. The passive but like, stuff. There is no other active like industry where I look at where I want to spend because I used to run a trucking company, right, dude. Not a fun business to run. Not a fun, exciting, you're, you're interesting. Dealing with people. Yeah, and and, and like yeah. uh, interesting people too. Yeah, you know what I'm saying yeah. in that industry. Um, but like, uh, it was like, dude, that it was decent money. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? But it was terrible, like life. It was not like you know you're you're a slave to that business because like a lot of people think with business like oh I'm gonna be a business owner. It's like bro, like 90% of businesses like you're a glorified contractor. Correct. You know Correct. what I mean? Like you're not a business owner in the sense of that term. Like oh yeah, I, it's like no no you you work for your business, you know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah. with trading, it genuinely, like, that, that's one of the cool things about trading is you can, like you said, you could just wake up one day, your bank account's straight, you're not really like worried about like, oh, I gotta trade this week to, yeah, to, yeah. to keep this yeah, business just, going. I don't, I living. gotta pay my Trading is one thing that you don't have to rely on anybody, any type of industry, like any market, like trend or anything to, to be able to make money. And that's like the beauty of it. You could just be solo at your desk. You could be in a corner in the dark. Yeah. You'd be in the phone. I got off the plane oh, the other day. Was waiting for the lift. <laughs> I was literally waiting for the lift, bro. Trading on Trading View Mobile. To be like, in just, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that, like that's that's crazy. Like, I was just like, this is cool as hell. You know, like. Yeah. So like, I think like once person is like is a trader and like they actually can see like what trading can actually do for a person like mm-hmm. at like the highest level and everything else. Like, 
you look at every other stream as decent. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? At best, at You're best, not going to look yeah. at like, like 20% a year. That's sick. 20% a year. What? Yeah. <laughs> that's disrespectful, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's like every other industry, right? Disgusting. Yeah. Well, like, I mean, like, <laughs> there are sometimes, like, like with real estate, it's like, I look at that as kind of like the safety net, like the long, yes. long game. Yeah. So I don't even look at that. Just like, a lot of people are like, oh, like, the, but wait till the rate come rates come down by and I'm like look I'm not trying to like get into this and flip correct, cribs. Correct, correct. I'm just like yo where can money go where it's not gonna just be and my forget about it yeah, yeah. The, my yeah checking. like they're like talking about interest I'm like bro I could like I'm not even planning to do anything with that money for 15 20 25 years put it over there yeah you know yeah, what I'm exactly, saying exactly. like that's like you know that's like, but that's how you have to look at everything for what it is like you know you look at like your active income as active income you're gonna put in time to that you're gonna put in effort effort yeah you're yep. gonna you know try to get leverage on that but like then uh, everything else is like passive. You have to treat it passive. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So, cause I, I have friends like, um, like with ambition, with some people comes the desire to want to do 50 different things. Yes. You know what I mean? And then people like that, it's like you're all over the place and you're really never like putting focus effort into one thing. And that any one of those 50 things could be the thing. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And like, um, as soon as I realized that trading was going to be that for me, like it just didn't make sense. Like, you know, whether it's trading or trading related business, just something in this, you know, niche Field, that I, yeah. I, yeah. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's like, why? venture out because I have people all the time oh let's start this let's do this business let's do that and I'm just like dude oh, I'm like, good bro it sounds you know good like, but no <laughs> yeah yeah exactly it's like yeah, yeah I'm not like I, and I've made that mistake before you know mm -hmm. what I mean because then you, you you go into it and then you're like your time is because you know everyone wants to believe that you can be like uh you know maybe if you're like a silent uh, investor yeah it's different that, again that's, that's in the yeah. passive thing you know what I mean but it's like if you want to go out and start all these different businesses it starts taking away from the main one you know mm -hmm. what I mean yeah. and it's just like you have you know, people would rather have, like, would you rather have five million dollar a year businesses or would you have one ten million dollar a year business? That's true, yeah. Like, but yeah. people love that that chase of, like, it's like mm -hmm. a dopamine thing just starting, like, being a serial entrepreneur or whatever. You know what you it know? is? Because I think um, people like to see, like, what they're capable of in, in other industries, you know? Like, it is fun. I've done yeah. that many, many times also, yeah. but, like, I didn't they, like, I never ever put trading second, ever. Yeah. You just come right back. You no, know, it's never second. Like, it's always first. So, like, I could dabble all here, but at the same time, I'm never gonna, gonna put here. That down here because like here makes me the um, biggest income like the most fastest like the um, biggest jumps in net worth and that kind of stuff yeah exactly Every company that kind of stuff is not going to do that for you mm -hmm. it's like a more of like a slow a slow growth thing no company like right now I feel like it's going to pay you like 10k a day or 20k days or 100k days with trading will yeah because that's where well, you're not going. getting it instantly. That's the thing. Is like if you invest 100k in a business, you're not going to see the ROI instantly. But I'm spoiled. Trading, you almost have it instantly. But I'm spoiled yeah, in yeah. trading, so <laughs> I want that. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? yeah. I need to see that. Yeah. You know. So um, I look at like that company that say like, oh, you're like two percent a year. I'm like, no, definitely not. I'm not doing that. You know, <laughs> because we know like what we could do in this field. You know. Yeah. I and, delete and, like, the chat right after two percent yeah, like, a year. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? A lot of like, banks yeah. and everything else would want you to put up like 500k to make five um five percent a year and then you're like yo do you know what i could do with 500k yeah. in, a, in an account right now yeah you know yeah. a lot of people should yeah. try and take advantage of training because it's infinitely scalable up or down like yeah. if you have 500 dollars, you can open a business essentially yeah yeah right? yeah, like, yeah you don't have to uh invest along the way the barrier to entry is so low but that's yeah. probably why it's so competitive it's like um there's just so much opportunity for you to grow wherever whatever starting point that is yeah right? but as you, you're making money in trading i feel like it's, it's very important to invest in those passive incomes yeah um real estate it could be like some Amazon stuff, it could be um, like some side stuff, you know, like, you know, anything else that doesn't have to be at full risk all the time. And, and full yeah. attention too. Yeah. That's yeah, exactly, the big thing, because exactly, yeah. like attention, bro, and like your energy and focus is like, that's the most important currency in my opinion. Like when you get to a certain point, it's like, okay, how are you spending your time? How are you spending your energy? It's like, you know, the money you can make and get it back, right? Correct, time, correct, correct. if you can't spread yourself too thin, then everything else falters, yep, you know yep, what I mean? Yep. Um, thing. Another big thing too is like building a good team of people. Like if you want to have like those kinds of things, you have to have the right people that are you that you trust that are running. Not not like friends, you know what I'm saying? Like people you've met that are that are good in these other industries. Because um, I used to make the mistake too of like always like trying to partner up with a friend, like a childhood friend. Which sometimes it can work out amazing. Yeah. Sometimes it does. But then a lot of times it's like it just is you're trying to make something work just because you want it to work, and then it ends up like just being a money sink. You, you know, know what, what I, mean? I I used to do, and then I, I yeah. kind of like I gave it over. That right there. Look at what? Photography. Oh, photography? Yeah. Oh. Then, and, and then I found him. You know? yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> now I, I don't have to focus on that anymore. You know what I'm saying? But at the yeah. same time, it was fun, but that's not like my focus. Right. So now I can focus on what I'm good at and still build like my empire. And then he's good at that. Yeah, exactly. You know? So you at the same time, it, yeah. like his skill plus my skill, empire. Boom, done. Exactly, yeah. man. Yeah. It's, it's all about leverage, too, because it's like, you know, 
the, the one the you know the jack of all trades it's just like you know you can't be the best at all those that's things at once right. yeah you gotta like you gotta have one dude who's the best at this and then that's how you get like that hive mind like it's like um uh, all of like the the big big time billionaires like back in the day like you know like uh, Rockefeller uh, Ford all of them like one of the consistents among all of them is like most of the different Delegate things everything. yeah most of the Delegate different everything. main things they were just the, the organizer right like they didn't even really know how to do a lot of the different things that was being done the levers that were being pulled but they did know how to meet those people and how to compensate them how to keep everybody happy and work mm -hmm. as a team and that's really like that's the what's going to get thing, you yeah. yeah exactly bro 100% yeah <laughs> on the, on the on this topic anyway in terms of businesses that's one thing i wanted to ask you all because you all obviously have you know families your friends your you know um, hobbies your business your trading <clears throat> there's so much going on like how do you maintain all those things and how do you do it and still stay you know motivated and and you know driven to, to push forward i think um not everything um needs 100 percent attention you know what i'm saying trading does not even need even like probably 30 percent you know um and it, it it needs a, a certain percentage for a certain amount of time in the morning because that's when I trade. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, family, 60% and that kind of stuff. Girlfriend, 30, 40% probably, you know. Um, so everything never needs 100% of my time all at the same time, you know. So I, I think at that point, you kind of like can find balance eventually. But I think the thing with balance also, like balance is, is, is made up. It's always a thing that you're gonna try to keep on trying to get better at eventually. You, there never comes a point that you're fully, fully balanced where you're trying to gain balance. So you're getting better at it over time though. Controlled chaos. Yeah, yep, yep, it's exactly. Controlled yeah. chaos, man. That's how it always is. It always will be. Yeah. I love that. How about you? Yeah. I mean, for me, I don't really have like much balance. It's hard to manage everything, but like he was saying previously, you just get better at it over time. So I try and find balance between uh, my own personal time family time and then everything else that I do on top of that yeah yeah uh, same thing here honestly we, we sat down in Dubai and talked about it like you had the analogy with spinning plates it's essentially the same thing you have all these different things going on you kind of have to find a way to balance it all right like between downtime spending time with family working on your businesses like staying focused on the charts it's just it's constantly evolving like I don't think you could just have a set routine day in day out because there's wrenches that get thrown in the plans is like different things pop up you know this might need more of my attention so i have to focus on this over here for a little bit uh yeah it's just you're constantly working on it it's like never perfect yeah 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 that's yeah. the thing it's never perfect yeah and you have to there's, accept there, that yeah like there's certain times that like um you know you're probably spending too much time on the charts um <laughs> whether you're neglecting something else yeah like yeah, you know yeah. but it comes to a point that like you, you kind of like um try to make a schedule but you follow it for a little bit, but then you kind of like go off track and that kind of thing. And it, but then you, you get back on track and then do it all over again. It's kind of like that. Like you're always trying to actually find that balance, but eventually, you know, it comes to a point that you never ever find it, but you always work towards it. Yeah. Which, which is like the most important right? thing. It's yeah. Like you yeah. can never be perfect, but you can always strive. For yeah. It. Like that's, yeah. Personally, that's good enough. Yeah. Honestly, that's good yeah. enough for me. Definitely. And going so. back to the trading side, like in terms of, uh, we mentioned earlier, but we didn't really talk, talk on it individually, but. In terms of uh, reversals or continuations, yeah, you know, I think a lot of people really hurt themselves in terms of trying <clears> to always catch reversals when they could probably just make a lot more money. Listen, like I spoke about that to like like my like my group the, the other day. Like a majority of people actually they strive to catch just reversals, but there's so much more continuation patterns in the chart. Like you're gonna see those a lot more often, but people always try to actually focus on just trying to catch like that bearish and golf and that bullish and golf and like you know like that um doji type of a pattern like they all try to catch those but eventually like they got to figure out that like remember like if you're trying to go against the entire army you're going to fail a lot versus going with where the majority of that momentum is there's going to be like that c c continuation pattern that pretty much lines up every single time you'll see that a lot more time because the market is always trending majority of the time you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. yeah. yeah it's like how many swing highs are there and swing lows versus not really legs much. yeah that's how always how many candles are reversals well it's, yeah. it's really three to four candles yeah. at the end of the day i think that's kind of what i like about futures right now is because like there's positive drift in the indices so it's like if you stay long 60 percent of the time use leverage mm -hmm. you're probably better off than trying to trade every reversal in forex oh, oh yeah yeah, yeah. 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 That's yeah. because there's a ton of like just intraday consolidation there's a lot of reversals but yeah, I think catch a reversal is extremely difficult. I try not to. Like you yeah, catch yeah. low time frame reversals inside the higher time frame trend. Correct. That's really yeah, what yeah, I yeah, yeah. You know That's what I, I love like doing. As far as like the big time, like everybody for the last like yeah. I don't know how many weeks now, 
oh, the stock market's coming down. Nah, it's coming man. down. I'm like, dude, like, they're I waiting mean, for it. All of a sudden, they, they get my, burnt every time. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> not yet. Bitcoin's <laughs> Bitcoin's gonna crash. Bitcoin's been around. I'm like, dude, why do you want to fight it so bad? Like, I get it because you want to be like, you feel like you're almost like foolish to buy into the pump or something. I'm like, bro, just like read what the market is telling you. Like, for example, like whenever we're all time highs, everybody's like, what do we do? We're all time highs. I'm like. We're bullish until proven guilty. Yeah. Like that's the way I look at it. I'm I like, love that you, saying. Actually, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, that's how I always say like that. I'm like, like, why do you try? The market is at all time highs, pushing higher. Like, why are you trying to continuously mm-hmm. sell it every kind of day? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's like they're trying to be the what is it? Uh, the big Michael Burry. Uh, yeah. Like the big short. They, you know what I mean? Like that person catch wants the, the trade of the year that, or something. That person wants like that most wickest wiki 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 entry. Yeah. yeah, the yeah most the top, wiki, wikiest yeah, entry yeah, ever. Yeah. Just hold on, wait. Just to show it off. Oh yeah, yeah, and that's, that's ICT it. traders a lot, bro. ICT because ICT is built off reversals. That's like kind of like the thing, like you know, they're cat, they're buying where everybody else sells. Like you know, okay. we're in a, we're the you know, this guy's the liquidity. Yeah, and it's like, bro, like that's not how it works. like they they get the wrong idea from it. It's like we're not it's here like to jumping in front of a moving train. Literally, literally and yeah. then like yeah, and then fit, they'll do it fifty times on the fifty first time it works. They're like, oh, so yeah. I told you, <laughs> I told you, man, yeah. I just called the crypto crash, bro. The like, amount of money that was lost around that time is yeah. crazy. They do, yeah, it's just they like, do all of that counter trend trading to catch a two R multiple. Literally. Bro, That's and the then, then they'll like write home about it, forget everything, else, forget all the other fun and do accounts. it again the next day, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, but yeah, no, yeah. like, uh, there's a book, uh, Tom Hugard. I don't know if you ever heard of uh, no. he's like a huge trader, bro. Like, he, he, uh, he, he did like a bunch of competitions. He's from Europe, he trades Dow and I think like the DAX, like the German indices, okay. But he, he's done crazy shit, like multiple times, like publicly turned 10k to like 3 million, like done it multiple times, mm-hmm. right? And um, one of the biggest takeaways that he talks about is just like com- continuously just never trying to catch reversals. Like remember we were talking about like his, his strategy, like he'll buy like when, like, but for example, like if he's, we, it's kind of like how we were talking about scaling in, but like every time it's hitting a target, he's buying in more, adding mm-hmm. the position. Not yeah. like, I mean, I don't know exactly how he does yeah, it. Yeah, the way, yeah, yeah. Like, the way it makes it sound. In favor, he's adding in instead yeah. of taking profit. But, so but, like but that's where, how. Where you would take profit, he's adding in more. Profit. Yeah, because I mean, he's looking for that con- yeah, yeah. The continuation. continuation move, right? He's going to get that big hit, and then it's like that's going to make up. Because he was saying like his win rate was like only like 20%, but his average R, R multiple is like 25 See, but that's why it's I, like, I yeah. kind of go against that whole. Yeah, I'm not with that either. Yeah, yeah the yeah. win that's rate stuff and everything else. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I personally care less about a win rate. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and then yeah. Like, so it's based, the mo- where's the money at? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right? like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's like, okay, like, you know, might have a. I mean, I, I do try to keep at least like a 40 to 50%. Yeah, but yeah. But like, you know, it's like. But don't be so fixated on just a good winning rate. every single you know, trade yeah. does well, make people sense people want data like people are like oh like uh, on my youtube i put a lot of educational stuff out everyone's like what's the win rate of this strategy i'm like bro you're so lost like okay even if i told you like what my win rate is with it Next like that's gonna not different well, that's it's not gonna, gonna be it for this dude yeah. like you know what, I mean? what are you trading <clears throat> like what time frames you know what i'm saying it's yeah. just like bro you can't expect yeah. that going forward either like yeah, yeah you like cast that 50 percent win rate to next week or tomorrow yeah Remember, exactly that's not size wise also like you could have lost 100 times and everything else with 0.01 you know what i'm saying but then make one trade that was like with like a two lot and all of a sudden made everything back up plus more that was so like, like yesterday i did that. i was trading like uh, i was trading half a position size i took two losses and then i traded a full position size yeah. and then it was like ran like three hours and everything back and more yeah even you know what i'm yeah. saying so it's just like that and it's it's really knowing like kind of when when to do that right, right. yeah yeah because yeah. a lot of times like kind of like what you were saying earlier, like sizing in the only time i really like either I'll, I'll size down but if i'm sizing into a position i only do it whenever i'm up oh, only yeah. it'll do that if i'm like That's building into it Nice yeah. No, no gas on the fire. Because your risk no is like you, you can maintain like the sim- same or similar risk while still scaling in heavily. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But with indices lately, man, like that's honestly been the play because everything's just been so crazy. Like really the whole last like yeah, t- two years down, even. Right? Like indices have been crazy, <laughs> man. Like since dude. COVID. It's sweet. Yeah, dude. Indices. Yeah. I, yeah. Like it's crazy. People like when y'all are trading just Forex and stuff. I was 33,000 like, to like now 38,000 plus or 30. It's ridiculous. insane, bro. It's Terrible. insane. That's the, it's it's the market. So sooner, honestly. Like yeah, I, yeah. I notice from a statistical standpoint, my average R multiple is like a six. Or like it's like a five or six. In forex, it's like you're struggling to get a two on a given day, especially see, in New York session. See, I don't know about that, that, that. As far as like, I don't know about those those um stats and everything because I haven't really been like too involved in like the journaling mm-hmm. and that kind of stuff. So like, yeah. is that good or bad? Yeah, yeah no, it's, it's good, good. It's, it's good because yeah. like by, by the time, time I sit down at the charts in forex, it's like half, half the daily range, range is already gone, yeah. and yeah. then it's like dead for the rest of the day. Like yeah. the yeah. daily change, the, the euro didn't move at all. Yeah. So essentially, you know, you're kind of fighting a market that's not moving, mm-hmm. right? Like that's forex essentially all the time. Like a one percent day is massive, mm-hmm. but a one percent day in Nasdaq or ES, like that happens all the time. Right? Yeah. yeah.
a lot of it's seasonality too. Like uh, like right now, like the with forex, I get a lot of people in my group are like trading. I'm just like look at like the dollar seasonality. Like as you can go back over the last 20 years, just because of like macroeconomic stuff, like the dollar just doesn't really move in January and February. No. So you got to kind of understand too. Like right now, like ever since COVID, the way that they've been treating interest rates, like that's going to cause indices to be the biggest moving market because 100%. that's you know yep. what i'm saying like that's where the most money is whenever we ha we're in it's like movements every single week yeah yeah, yeah. And, and it's just like you got to understand like the logic behind things like okay like you know there's a reason that all this has moved like yesterday everyone was like oh my god what happened in the market i'm like bro look at nvidia they're yeah. like what do you mean I'm like, it was, bro, it was up like 36 like, percent before yeah. even the bro, I session buy, man, I, about buy, I was like i was buying into like stock, different stocks and stuff and I, I, i'm guilty of trying to not buy the top yeah, well no i was gonna buy nvidia at like 400 bucks like mm -hmm. recently and i was like nah miss it's, it's too high too, yeah. bro it's like 700 bucks now. it's never too it's high insane. or it's yeah. never too like, dude and yeah, i know better yeah. than that i know better than that too yeah yeah. Like I, I did catch crypto this time though that was one thing i was like i i'm not waiting much longer than mm -hmm. that yeah no nah. crypto has been crazy recently too just bite the bullet and let's go yeah that crypto man like dude i i the way i do it is like i'll I'll have a wallet that's like I don't even really have access to it so like if I'm buying into crypto for like swings like that's like literally on my computer yeah you know what I'm saying like if I'm buying into shit like that like I'm, I'm planning to hold that like like for example like Bitcoin right now everyone's like because I've been I called out to everybody like last like late last summer like hey like start buying Bitcoin every week just a little bit right like whatever is whatever is affordable like that's the way that I was telling people to do it because yeah. everybody you know they're like, are we selling? Are we selling? I'm like, I mean, what is it value to you? Like, do you think that this is like, I mean, if you want to sell, sell. But I'm like, I'm not even thinking about selling that shit till 100K plus. Yeah. And if it, it could come all the way back to 15K and I'm going to keep buying more. Like, whatever. You know what of I mean? Course. But that's how, that's kind of how you have to treat shit like that. Like with. Yeah, with, trader. Yeah, and I'm investing it. And that's why a lot of people don't get, there's a big, big difference with that. Yeah. You know what I mean? A huge difference in like, oh, I'm, I'm investing versus I'm trading. trading. Yeah. Like, what, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because like. You know, trading. I'm just sitting there. I'm looking at the chart only, like investing. Also, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Short term yeah, stuff. Shouldn't be looking at a chart. Right? Kind of. I mean, I kind of do. Like, I kind of do. Like, like with with crypto. Like, whenever it was at the, you know, it's actually hilarious, bro. I had like longs from like 15.5, bro, and shut them off at like 17. Like, but they were like a leverage trade. Yeah. You know, it yeah. But it's you know, I wasn't. It was like, and I, again, I was trading. But I look back on it, I'm like, and I had a feeling too. Cause it was like FTX, all that shit happened. I was like, mm, this yeah. is gonna. Be, I, I was like, bro, this is like the the typical. Th it's always like that in crypto. Crypto is a scam. It's over. Yeah. You know, the, the, people just happened. lost billions. Yep. You better. That's when it's going to go. Like everybody's like, oh. Even ICT was like, oh yeah, Bitcoin's going to three k. <laughs> it's like, man, no. Like yeah. it's just not not happening. And and you have the having um in April twenty second. Dude, actually. I know. Yeah. And everybody was waiting for that though. Everybody is waiting for that. And then now they're like, oh, like is it gonna yeah. keep going? But like, they're saying like, yeah, like it might go to. 20k and then k you know now, i'm yeah. like uh yeah that's kind of steep honestly you know but i could see it coming out a little bit but yeah it's like i don't even try to like play those with yeah the, you just buy into it and just hold on it's like don't volatile, right? yeah yeah just like i don't even look at it bro yeah. like I, I the other day i, I bought like some of these because i've been i always tell people too though if you're trying to really like kill it with crypto mm -hmm. like you i look at bitcoin almost <clears> like real estate yeah. in a way like I, i'm not really looking at that like oh, I'm gonna, like you might 2x like that's like i mean that's that sounds like crazy it's really not that crazy to like 2x and something in some crypto like mm -hmm. if you're buying other coins like the altcoins and shit like that's where that's where you'll get those crazy like crazy returns big jumps and everything yep, yep, yep. yeah 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 and like two weeks shit will jump like a couple hundred percent yeah, yeah. Yep. shitty coins and then so yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> Quick. yeah man there's like some that like that uh you heard about the one riz started up no i'm just kidding <laughs> 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 words of wisdom coin that's it yeah. yeah i loved what tate did actually it was so funny uh tate did that tweet um yeah. a couple of weeks back where he's like I'm launching a coin. You know, it's gonna be called Toy Take Coin or some shit like that. And then uh, when I saw him, I said the same thing to him. I was like, you know, what well, you gonna launch a coin? He says, no. He goes, uh, how long have I been like ripping everyone about who makes yeah, their own coin yeah. and like pump and dumps? Why would I do that? He goes, the amount of emails I was getting, oh, yeah. you know, the amount of Listen, emails and the amount of people <laughs> believing it. Yeah, it makes money. It you know, makes money, go but it just bar, it goes oh nowhere. God. That shit would be done. Like the thing, the, the thing with like all the shit coins and stuff though that people don't get is like half the time they're like defi they're they're literally designed to like rug pull. Money, right? I mean, yeah, like like design, like cause like the way that they work, like there's like the liquidity, you know what I'm saying? Like, so you can buy and sell is like locked in a in a pool, right? Like it's like how the safe moon dudes are like getting like fucked is because it's basically like definitively they would create like a, a Ponzi scheme in a contract pretty much. But people don't it's even like, look into yeah, that shit. Yeah, They're just yeah. like, it's coded in it. Right? Like Jake Paul said to buy it, let's go. Like, <laughs> oh my God, I lost 30K, can't believe it happened. Like, you know what I'm yeah. saying? It's yeah. like, you know, like, like, like bro. Because it was designed that way. Like, bro, there was this coin, it was called, I'm not shitting you, bro. It was called Dink Doink or some dumb shit. And people what? were in my Discord. Yeah, it was, I'm not playing with you, bro. It's literally like, they have like a fucking like skit video. It's like South Park. And people like had lost their ass on it and were like, yo, I can't believe it. I lost that. It's Damn. like, bro, what are you talking about? I know. Well, like crypto kind of really shows you, especially with the shit, name bro. of some of these old coins. It just shows you 
how they're stupid trolling. some traders are. Yeah, they're yeah, trolling. yeah. They're trolling. But like you had to learn, bro. You, there was a lesson. Scam coin. <laughs> Buy it now. Like, come on. Don't okay. Think twice about their money moves, right? Like when they think about taking risk in the markets, never think twice about it. They're like, that sounds good. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. they're always looking at like the potential return, mm-hmm. right? You talked about seasonality earlier in terms of like, um, you know, the markets and there's always people saying like, oh, summer's bad for trading, December's bad for trading, uh, I don't trade Monday or I don't trade this, you know, any news day, etc. And by the sounds of it, if you listen to all of this, you'd probably never trade. Yeah. There'd probably yeah. never be a day you can trade. There's Kinda too like much of that, What I was man. saying about that, I was like, listen, like, I think I, I've been a part of every single season. So that could be summer, it could be the top of the year, it, it could be the end of the year. Um, it's, all, it's always different, yes, but at the same time, like, I think it, it, it makes you a bit more seasoned. Um, you you kind of understand different market environments a lot more also, and also it sharpens up your skills as well. So, like, you understand how to trade in, like, a slow market, a fast market, like, a, you know, like a, a high news market and that kind of stuff. So, like, you have a bit more experience being that trader that's pretty much a part of every single season versus the person that only trades um, during the top of the year. Yeah, no, you know, for yeah, sure. Yeah. It's all about You're awareness. You're missing out a lot. It's always yeah. awareness because it's yeah. like, you know, okay, yeah, like if it's earnings season, like, you know, there's going to be like different characteristics of the market building up to that. For Just even, even for like it. Even yeah. every month, right? Like the, the second week, usually the month. The first week's NFP, second week's going to be CPI. Correct. That's where the third week is usually, in my experience, usually the third week is going to be like the one that's the clearest move. Clean like, yeah. it, Literally. Okay. But, you know, I'm like, and, and you can tell, like, but again, it's not like, oh, well, I'm not going to trade all the other just because. It's more like, okay, well, I'm kind of risk. aware of it. Yeah, yeah just lower your risk or something. Yeah. Yeah. Happen. Like, I typically don't trade heavy in December, but this December was like my best year. I mean, my that's best you, month yeah. ever. So it's like, you kind of have to understand like what the market sentiment is, first of all. Like, is the Fed actually doing something to mm-hmm. cause like volatility in the markets? And then there's times where it's just dead, where you can't get a gauge on the market. Like mm-hmm. those slow periods happen, I would say a couple times throughout the year, but you can't, you can never really like predict when exactly it's gonna happen. You correct, have to understand correct. like, once it does happen, like how do I move her? in that condition just yeah. be a part of it just, yeah, yeah. Just, and the worst thing people do with yeah. with a lot of like i see like what you're talking about in ict they're like yeah like, don't trade any red folder like don't trade any day monday i'm yeah, like, like bro like like we're literally trying to day trade bro like do you want <laughs> volatility or, like don't trade when there is a hope to have a big range day. and it's like then you tell people that it, it's just like okay like don't like put yourself in like a you know some crazy 50 yeah. lot trade you can't be in right before <clears throat> nfp or something yeah, yeah it's not like use common yes. sense but like you know what i mean like red folder new to yeah, I mean, like, I, I trade on, like, that's when I want to trade, bro. If I'm looking at the week, like, I always go through the group with the group on Sundays. I'm like, okay, like, you know, these are probably going to be the better, the better expansive yeah. days. You and know I what I mean? Like, like, FOMC continuation plays, like, work out so well. Like, after yeah. FOMC, 2 p.m., smooth. Going into the next yeah. night, it's like smooth. Yeah. CPI, yeah. too. Not CPI is another one, like, almost always on indices recently. It's been like the flavor. The CPI will have a huge move. You'll have a consolidation in the morning. Right on like 1.30, 2 o'clock, you'll get like a sweep up back into that move and then Insane. it'll just start going yeah. crazy. Those are like some of the best trades yep, right there, yep. bro, I'm telling you. Like Less so, risk, too. Yeah, 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 literally, bro. And you, you don't have it's to. It's experience, though, right? Like how many yeah. FOMC events have you traded versus the guy that's like trying to hit it out of the park? Bro, are you saying? First FOMC event. On, on options, I used to have the dumbest strategy. Like I, I can't remember where I learned this. It was like you buy, like if you're bullish, right? Like you could be bullish or bearish. You had like at least one way. And like let's say if you're bullish, you would buy like to buy stop sell stop no you well, no, not, that, not, that, not, not that much not that but like two uh, zero crazy. day calls <laughs> buy two crazy. zero day calls right on yeah. spy and then like if you're like if, like let's say if you're bearish you'd buy two uh two puts and like one two not two exactly but two for one right yeah. basically oh, like but dude honestly that shit actually would work if you were right half the time but then you'd have to know when it's but it's looking back now that, like i know what i know it's just so stupid like, <laughs> you were a would, wild boy <laughs> yeah yeah it was, but, I, but i can't Something remember i, I learned that stu- uh, I, I learned that from somebody too that was like uh I'm there try- like all these complex option strategies that you can well make. the thing about options man like so uh, a lot of the people like for example the group that i started in the now i'm an owner of like um a lot of the people that they're a little older and they're not really even like the social media crowd, but they trade like a lot of different super complex options. But they basically, it's like the same way a lot of funds are trading. So there's like a theta wheel strategy, basically. A what? It's called theta. It's like theta and options is like how the time decay. Okay, yeah. So like, you know, a lot of people make money selling options because mm-hmm. you could buy options or you could sell them to yeah. people. Cold um, yeah, or, yeah, yeah. It's like, there's, yeah. there's also, there's like strangles. Yeah, they're on that. They're, yeah, or, or they're just selling. Um, like they might use leverage to do it, like a margin, right? But um, they they have some really complex ones that even I don't understand. But they'll be like uh, only like point like three point four R, but they'll be like have like a ninety percent hit rate. But they take like days to play out. It's something I want to learn actually because it's more of like a passive. It's just a, yeah. Well, it's not even like trading. It's more of like a passive. Like they'll look at like ranges or they'll look for 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 uh, stocks that are ranging and then but they dump heavy like because you know the win rate's so high. 
Um, but they, they put way more into the into these trades. But it's something that's interesting though. But that, it just goes to show there's so many different ways you can make money off of off of trading that yeah. just like oh yeah like you know wake up in the morning three risk to reward four extra. You know what I'm saying? Like there's so many different different angles you can take. 100%, 100%. Do any of you guys understand or, or use fundamentals in your trading? Or do you just purely uh, technical? Um, very, very small percentage. I might read like a couple article or two, but, but, but that's really about it. I'm more of a technical trader. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've found a lot of um, clarity like when it came to like, I have friends that do the fundamentals, so I'll probably get, get their insight on certain things. But um, I think like that's like one thing that I do aspire to actually learn in the future. But technicals work great for me at the moment, so I'm not really stressing it like right now. You know? yeah. But I think it's it's a big thing that um, it definitely makes a person a, a bit more profitable, but also like a bit more aware of like big news events. And yeah, like which one's yeah. more important? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. there's really yeah. understanding um, CPI or FOMC or NFP like by the numbers, not by just speculation from the charts and everything. Yeah, and like you know, even like data. certain yeah. FOMCs are more important. Like the one that's coming out from what I've talked to the people that are pretty knowledgeable, yeah. like that one is like way more important yeah, yeah. than like, like the previous one. Yeah. Yeah. Right, because like one of them could be more, way more like impact for the market than the yeah. other. But, and it's good to be aware of that. But I agree, it's like, you, why, why throw a curveball? If you're already doing good, it's like, I almost don't want to learn more sometimes about certain yeah. things. Because there's always like that, then now you're thinking about that. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, why more, if you, if you already know, like what works for you, you have something that's yeah. like scale when you've refined it. I'm like, like a uh, like kid, I was talking to him earlier, he's like trying to tell me something, I'm like, but I don't even wanna like look at that. I don't, I don't wanna have yeah. this new strategy in my head that, no, that no, maybe that's works why for you. I, I said that I have friends that do it like yeah, 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 yeah. full time. Yeah, so like that's the I, way to do it. I'll buy into their program so yeah. I, I can learn something, like the more summary from what I'm trying to actually comprehend versus me trying to actually read like an entire article to, 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 um, to try to figure out like what's important or like what's not important. Right? Yeah, exactly. I agree hundred yeah. percent. You don't want to ever like pollute what, what you've got going. Yeah, works. because now all of a sudden like I'm overcomplicating like, like, like my own trading style versus just trading like how I've been trading. You know, exactly, you know? man. And, and then trying to actually do the small things versus trying to actually change like my entire strategy and that kind of stuff. Yeah, you know? no, yeah. for sure. hundred percent. Yeah, I understand fundamentals, but I don't really use them too much because I, yeah. I find that they, they take a long time to play out. Like that market narrative might take three to six months to Correct, play out. Correct, yeah. It's like I'm day trading. Yeah, and they're like the, the bias. Day, like like I a could trade against bias. Yeah. That. yeah, I could trade against that narrative if I need to. Yeah. But like I never found it uh, that impactful in my trading, to be honest. So It's like a saying yeah. that, that they say, um, they say um, get your bias fundamentally, but enter technically. Yeah, yeah. You know, like you can't get a, a a good entry from just fundamentals. Mm -hmm. It's impossible because they're focused on like the bigger time frames, H4 daily and that kind of stuff. Yeah, you know, it just takes too long. Like, yeah, get in and make money and then leave. Maybe like yeah. investing or something. Like, oh, like yeah, you know, they're correct, doing, like earnings. Like, yeah. that's investing. different. But like that's totally different. Though. Fundamentals like, yeah. are yeah. are are. I think I feel like fundamentals are a necessity when you're actually investing. But from a day trading perspective, I think just with technical analysis, you can get away fairly well. Correct. Like I have a general understanding of fundamental analysis, especially when it comes to days like. CPI, FOMC, but I'm very heavily reliant on my technical analysis yeah. and my trading system. Technical yeah. life. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And definitely. Let's move on to like some fun questions then. So like, uh, Q, you mentioned, um, <coughs> was it bucket list earlier? Yeah, bucket so list. Yeah. It'll be interesting to know like what is left on your bucket list item and same with you, Raul, and then we'll just move around. Yeah. I mean, to be completely honest, actually, I, um, I haven't created like a new bucket list, honestly, because um, like the last bucket list I had was from like when I was 18. All those are kind of like marked off already. Um, I haven't <laughs> sat down and pretty much wrote out what I want in my life now, so I'm still trying to find th th those key things and everything. So have you done a skydive before? Um, twice already. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, I've done a lot of things, but um, I don't know. I'm trying to still trying to like Swim with find. Sharks. Hell no! <laughs> I'm not <laughs> doing that. No, no, no. Mind one. That's crazy. I, I wouldn't do anything nowadays that that's pretty much like would risk my life. Yeah. Like, I feel that. I have man. too much yeah. going on yeah. to like, you know, do that. It's not that fun, bro. Like people <laughs> want to do this crazy shit and they're like, come on, bro, have fun. I'm like, man, yeah. like that's just not fun. Like, like I'm not A shark the other day um, broke in, into a, a swimmer's cage, actually. They were yeah, underwater. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the shark yeah. died, but at the same time, like it still was in the cage. Yeah, fuck yeah. that, bro. I'm right. yeah, I, I have too much going yeah, yeah, on at the moment to like, you know, take that kind of risk. Yeah, no, no, no. That way's up, bro. I wouldn't necessarily say like I have like a bucket list as like the majority of people would have a bucket list. Um, I feel like I've accomplished the majority of the goals that I've wanted to accomplish. Uh, I mean, bro, like I'm just stuck in this cycle of like, how can I be the best version of myself? How can I grow spiritually, mentally, financially? And then, you know, just provide the best life that I possibly can for the people that are around me. So I wouldn't really say like, mm -hmm. oh, I have like this, this and that goal, you know, but 
you know? See, that's the thing about traders, though, man. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we get spoiled very, very quickly. I think we knock out a lot of, like, these yeah, l- lifetime plans that a lot of people have mm-hmm. very, very quickly. Oh, yeah. So now what? So that, like, we kind of, like, spend the rest of our years and everything else trying to figure out, like, like things that we could actually be f- fulfilled by in some kind of way. It could be family. It could be friends. It could be just be given to others in some kind of way. But at the same time, for us, I think, like, we accomplish a lot of our personal goals very, very Fast. Especially if it's like yeah. material, bro. Yeah. Like it's, oh, yeah, it, yeah, it's super quick. Like I've owned every single car I've wanted to own, yeah. house, watches, you name it. It's like, now I don't what? know. What now? Yeah, because it's like <laughs> all like this stuff seems so better? crazy at one point. Everything that seems so crazy, it's just kind of like, you know what I mean? Now like it just same. happens and then it's just cool. You know, it's cool yeah. and it's you're always grateful for it. But yeah. it's not as like, it's not like what you imagine everything to be when you have way less. Yeah. It's not like when you actually get it, it's like, yeah. okay. Like you've already standardized that. Like that's like standard. That's the regular. You wake up every exactly. single day, and then that's yeah. that's the daily. Yeah, 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 correct, yeah. Correct, correct. And it's yeah, just yeah. like standardized, and it now like, it's like okay, like you know, a hundred million or whatever it is. You know what I mean? Like that's the next thing. It's like oh, well, I got a boat. Now I want a yacht. I got a yacht. Now I want a mega yacht. You know what yeah. I mean? That's why I said but like that's a cycle though. If if you're in that that um phase of just always wanting to level up, level up, level yeah. up, like there it's has to be a time it. period in your life that it's okay that you're good. Like you're stable. You're not wanting more you're not needing more you're pretty much as good you know that's when you really grow too like because like myself like i i try to reflect a lot like i'm pretty like i try to be mindful kind of like you said like just be better like overall and a lot of times like uh it's just being grateful and like really thinking about like okay like let's just say everything stop right where it is yeah like you'd be straight bro like you know what i mean like you gotta be grateful with that and like okay yeah sure would i like more sure you know what I mean? Would I would I work to get more? Am I going to? Yeah. But like, am I happy with what exactly where I'm at right now? Correct. What I have coming in. If every if all the music stopped, and then that's when you really realize like, okay, like damn, like because you know, 95% of people they don't have that. You yeah. know what I mean? So just having that, you've already won. It's a blessing. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's a without blessing, social bro. media, it, that becomes very easily. Mm-hmm. Um, uh-huh, I think 100%. with social media, like it it's kind of so hard harder. to like yeah, it makes everything because harder. it's there's always that that next person that pretty much has that next tier thing that yeah. you don't even know about, but but now that he has, oh now oh I, can I want do that it. now. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always yeah. a thing that, that you don't even know about until you're exposed to it. So the, yeah. so, so the more that you see, the the more that you want. It's the standard, man. It's just yeah. raise the same because it's like like you said, you know you see the next guy doing the same thing you are like for a lot of people like you're in a trade and then the next guy just made 25 times or more what you made or he has this lifestyle and you have this lifestyle yeah and like you may even be at a point where you're like beating you're making money trading which you've already won at that yeah. point you already beat 95 percent of people but you feel less yeah but you're like but then there's like a percentage within that percentage yeah, exactly it's like, mm. a perc- another 95 percent of people within <laughs> yeah. that five percent yeah. you know correct. what i mean yeah. and then it gets to the point like you said where it's just like you know, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, you can't just want to always have more. It gets in, like it's toxic, you know. Um, I've I've come to a, a point in life that like I'm at the most peace when I'm I'm not wanting anything. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I'm not needing anything. I'm not looking for anything. I'm just trying yeah. to just enjoy like my days and everything for what it is versus trying to always strive for more. Yeah. You know, and like once you actually get to that point, I feel like it's just enjoyable. It's a peace of mind. Mm-hmm. Um, stress free also. Like you actually can can take time to enjoy that car that you drive, enjoy the house that you have, enjoy the people that, that you're around and that kind of stuff, you know? Yeah. Versus feeling like you always want to try to find that next thing. Yeah, yeah, no, 100%, man, I agree. Buckle is tough, bro. I've been sitting here thinking the whole time, like, I don't really have one, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, so I'm yeah. just like, to, like, create a crypto coin and then rug pull it. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, no, I'm pretty much on the same wavelength as Raul, like, just trying to make an impact on people around me and, like, provide the best life to the people that are closest to me. Like, that's... Honestly, like, that's probably the most fulfilling thing that you probably ever think of. So when it comes to bucket list, I don't really have anything on my list. Like, I'm a pretty simple person, so. Yeah. yeah. That, that's because you're trading, bro. I'm telling yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. My mind, I guess <laughs> I kind of have one thing. If, 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 with traders, if you like, wasn't you trading, content, yeah. Just at your desk, yeah. you know what I mean? If yeah, you wasn't yeah. trading, trust me, like, those things would still be a thing. Yeah, yeah. But because we're trading, like, bro, like, the access to money, the access to, to make money, actually, it's so easy. Mm-hmm. So these... these Buckle list things, they all cost money. You know what I'm saying? A lot of them do, right? Yeah. So since it's so easy for us to actually get it's that. It's accomplishable. Yeah. It's easy. It doesn't it seem like for, so far to reach. But they don't have control over the time, right? So like a, somebody, if you ask somebody that works 60 to 80 hour weeks, like they're probably going to have a bucket list because they don't have enough time to do whatever they want. Right? One, one like, vacation bro, we a year. We can wake up and do whatever the fuck we yeah. want. Yeah, like, yeah. One, like look, like the regular person has one vacation a year or even like one vacation every two years, right? Mm-hmm. As a trader, we could pay for a whole vacation top notch in one trade. And then you could pretty much have a, a vacation every single month if you're pretty much trading at that level right there. That That's the kind of access that a trader has. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, so I think these 
bucket list stuff is kind of hard to keep up with because, bro, like, a bucket list every single month, maybe, you know? It's like achievements, too. Yeah. Like, for me, like, well, the first thing I thought it was boring as hell, I was like, well, I want to get, like, an uh, apartment complex. Like, I want to get, like, into a bigger real estate, like, yeah. a big real estate project that like we were talking. You know what I mean? That's, but I'm like, oh, what, wow, what a bucket. That's more work. <laughs> <laughs> but now I'm sitting here thinking, I'm like, man, you're already doing stressful. it. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like, bro, like, you know, you got to chill sometimes. But I am definitely, like, um, but I enjoy it, though. Like, a lot of the things, too, like, you know, I always say, like, uh, like, I, I mean, like, it's like that cliche thing, like, oh, you don't you don't work a day in your life if you but it's still work. You know Tra what I'm saying? Trading still work. Think, yeah. Anything thinking, is work. Yes, exactly. Work. Like, you know, not just yeah. sitting back yeah. and really just like, you know, chilling, like turning being on the golf off. course all day. Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Man, I, I know, know like a lot of people that, 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 that make a ton of money. They have this, they have that. They have, and like a lot of times, like they're in their office like this is. I mean, that's been me these last couple of months. Bro. Thinking because, yeah. you know, thinking takes a lot of power, a lot of energy, like it's a lot of a brain power to even process all these things. So I think that's still a form of work in some kind of way. It might not seem like it, but for that person, it definitely is because they're delegating all these things. They're dealing yeah, with all these people. It, they're right? like, in like about 20 different conversations on their texts like right now, you know, mm -hmm. like yeah. it's a lot, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's keeping work. up it's relationships. Yeah, everything. Like that's another thing too, like even managing a lot of people. Like I was, uh, I had a conversation with Umar recently <clears> actually, and, and we were just talking about like you could have like a big team of people and like at, at a glance that can like, you know, you'd think it increases your leverage and your output and like decreases your time. But a lot of the time, unless they're like A players, like it's actually increasing your mental load because now you're having to like babysit. And so, you know what I mean? And like manage these people. Yeah. Cause that's just as much like effort. It's just like now your reach is further. Yes, your output is increased. You're, you're doing but double the work if you're not working with A plus people. A hundred percent like- Because it, you're going over their work that they are supposed to be doing, but now you're doing it correctly. Exactly. So like what I did, I, I look at everything and I'm like, okay, like, what's your main goal, like, with the business you're doing, whatever, like, if, could, you know, do you see you being there with the same exact setup and people you are at, right, or are at with right now? Okay, answer is yeah. no, they need to go. You go through also, like, a cool exercise, go through, like, any organization or team, whatever you have, like, you're going to have, like, put an A, B, or a C on every, like, person in there, like, where you'd rate them, right? So at the end of it, you'd be like, okay, well, you're lying to yourself, there are no Bs, there's just either A or C. You know what I'm saying? You got to like, at the end of the yeah, day, that's true. you yeah. know what I'm saying? Cause yeah. now it's like, those are the people you just want to have along, but yeah. they really don't like that. That's not, it's not working. Correct, correct. Then you got to figure out a way to ethically remove those people <laughs> as quickly as possible. That's really, but, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, but I mean, if you think about it though, if you're running an organization, you know what I mean? You can't just like completely, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you, I mean, you can, but you really can, you can, you have yeah. to with some things, you have, you have to with some things, but you know, it's like, a, it, there comes a point too in a stage of growth where it's like a, a bittersweet thing where like, it's not even that like maybe something was done wrong or whatever, but it's just like, it's, it's outgrown. You know what I mean? Like, or it's just not the same, things aren't in the same wavelength. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. No, it's funny, like, I've, um, I've, I've broke apart from friendships in a very for formal way at times also. Yeah, right? yeah, like, yeah. Like, <laughs> Very formal, like, yo, listen, like, it's not working out, bro. Like, um, yeah. we're, on, <laughs> broke we're, up. we're on two different paths and that kind of stuff. And I can't really see you in my life anymore, bro. Yeah, so, no, 100%. Like, like oh, just I've done super that, yeah. formal. Yeah. And then that's how the conversation ended. That's yeah. it. Yeah. No, yeah, I don't. I man. felt good about it also. Yeah, no, it's, it's, yeah, and then you start making those calls everywhere. Like, when you make one of those, <laughs> yeah, then you yo, start listen, doing everything. Yeah, I got it. You're done, you're done. Yeah, yeah, no, for real. Yeah, it's like, that's what's very important to kind of like, you know, really, really, pick good people that's going to be around as far as good yeah. intentions. No, 100%. You know, good man. skills and that kind of stuff also because they could be around for a good amount of time but also add value to what you're already doing, you know? Yeah, and it's a blessing too. Like, yeah. um, like even sitting here with a group of people like this or like just in an industry where like, you know, you can, you really can make good connections. Like a lot of the people that I um, like was like either friends with or, or was in business with before, you know, I got to the point where I wanted to be at like those people. I don't even like talk to those people that much anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? But now it's like, I, I, you know, able to meet a lot of like high level people that you can kind of like jive with people. Like, you know what I mean? It is as a blessing to have elite people around you in a way, you know yeah. what I mean? And that's super important to maintain that and, mm -hmm. and really respect like your, you know, like, you know, I ain't trying to sound like your energy, like, and you know what I'm saying? Like, I hate that word almost because people, no, no, reason, but you know what I'm no, saying? But, you, know what I'm, you're, 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 but, you know what I mean? But like, it's but real it's, though. It's also important as well. You know what I'm saying? Because I think the energy word also is, is becoming like a big thing in the past in yeah, like yeah. six years probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but it's real though. I think it's making people a bit more aware of like, yo, the people that you do have around you do carry a certain kind of energy. hundred percent, bro. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I remember like about a couple of years ago, actually, I had um, ran into like an old friend from like high school, like, like one of my best friends from high school and everything else. And then we kind of, he moved away, came back. I ran into him at, at like a restaurant and then I'm talking to him inside his restaurant. And for some reason, it was like a, it's like a dark cloud around him. Yeah, like you can just yo the listen. Shit, like, yeah. I felt crazy, <laughs> but then I heard that same thing from multiple people that also know him as well. 
Yeah. And I was like, damn, that's crazy because I felt that same shit. So energy is definitely real. It's, 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 not, it's not spoken about enough yeah, yeah, yeah. in that kind of way. In the right you know, way. People it, overplay it. Yeah. Like, but, it, yo, but it's a real thing, though. It is yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing. I mean, Honestly, you don't have enough time to like be around people that have negative. No, people. bro. People that no, drain you, you, bro. Yeah. No, and, bro. And, life and, is too short. It, then yeah, you got to yeah, cut them off immediately. Yeah, 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 and it's yeah, like 100%. a form of like self-disrespect not to. Like A lot of people look at it like, oh, it's like the wrong thing to do because these people... You know, it's like you feel like you, because like, you know, a lot of like, you know, you got good intentions for people. Like most of the people that I meet that are very successful, like people, there's like a stigma. Like, I think a lot of people be like, oh, like, you know, that dude's a shark. He fucked people. It's like most of the time I meet people, they want to make a good impact on people. So a lot of times they'll put themselves in positions like early on in the journey where they feel like they're obligated to like help people or not cut things off. You know what I mean? You got to get to that point where it's just like you're like. It's not like uh, you're not taking care of yourself, yeah. keeping the wrong company. Because that is yeah, yeah. real. You know it what is, I mean? People that, the, the people that consider people sharks and everything else, then clearly that that person just didn't have the mindset to even do the kind of work 100%. that person's in. 100%. So like they just they just aren't built for it. Yeah. You know. So obviously like any little hiccup or or that kind of thing, like all all of a sudden they they feel offended. Like yeah. They feel like that person's a shark or like everything's personal. And shit. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can't stand that shit. So not everybody's is built for entrepreneurship. Oh you know no, definitely. Because, no, of course yeah. not. A lot of people are soft. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Going on to our final question, and this is a fun one I just randomly did on the uh, the last round table, and it was uh, an option. So you get two options. One is either what is a common question that you know your students or your community has asked you uh, that you feel would be you know good to just help other people out there in terms of what answer um, you know to that question, for example, in regards to trading. Or the other option is obviously we're in this community, we're, we're in this uh, you know, industry together and you may not get a chance to sort of ask a question to someone else here on the table. So if you had a question, whatever it may be, for someone else on the table um, that you were intrigued of an answer on, then you have those two options there. That's the only options? The other two options, yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can either ask someone else a question on the table or you can uh, you know, think of a, a question, a common question that you normally get from your community. Um, and just sort of, you know, throw that out there as a, as a tip or, or something for, for traders out there? Um, I, I think, like, I mean, like, my biggest tip that I always mention is, like, don't be scared to invest. You know what I'm saying? Like, as you're making money or, like, as you're in the game of making money, always be open to actually reinvesting into other things to make you more money or to make you more knowledgeable on something. That's about it. Yeah. Yeah. Because some people, like, they, they just don't reinvest. Like, they don't spend money on that other person's product and that kind of stuff because they are more experienced at a certain thing. Like, like for example, like I have that friend that pretty much is good at fundamentals. Mm-hmm. I bought his package. Yeah. Why? Because I'm not good at fundamentals. You are. Yeah. Here, take this. Yeah. I'm learning. You know? Why not? Why not? You know? Like if we're in a space that pretty much people are are good at certain things, mm-hmm. why be scared to invest in a, another person's thing just because now all of a sudden that person can say that you learned from them in some kind of way. Who, who gives a fuck? Right, yeah, people you know, are so scared. All, it's ego, man. All that matters is that you're learning that certain thing and then call it a day. You know what I'm saying? Like, So I'm not scared to invest in another person's product in, in any kind of way. Here, take this. You're, you're good at that. I'm not. Take it. I'm, yeah. I don't care. I'm, I have no ego towards giving money away because I'm learning. I'm, I'm getting that value back in some yeah. kind of way also. That's it. So, yeah. so, so overall, don't be scared to invest into um, education or another product that pretty much somebody might have that you might know, or even if that person is personal or like distant, that kind of stuff, who cares? Invest. It's, it's only gonna get you better in some kind of way. Yeah. Just. Financially, mentally, spiritually, in some kind of way, like you could actually gain something from that right there. You're gonna learn yeah. a lesson one way or another. Yeah. yeah. Reinvest and keep on learning. Like stay a student of the game the entire time. I think that's pretty much like the biggest thing. Like stay, remain a student of the game. I think for me, one thing that I get asked a lot in the community is like, okay, well, if you were in my shoes, what would you do? And the very first step would be one is obviously get educated with the trading system. And what I mean by system is like, I'm not talking about just the trading plan itself. I'm not talking about like just technical analysis, but I'm talking about a whole entire system on how you're going to journal your trades, how you're going to analyze your trades, and then the act of trading itself. Are you going to be micromanaging your trades or are you just going to be basically setting a take profit and a stop loss after you've entered position? So identify that first. Then go and start up your own live account. Try and find some form of consistency. After you've built a little bit of a track record for yourself, maybe two, three months, then that's when I would actually go for a prop firm challenge. Get the first funded account and get as many funded accounts as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. Once you have that blueprint of all these different funded accounts, get as many payouts as you possibly can on all of these different funded accounts and redirect 
half of that money into your own personal trading account and continue to trade that account alongside your own um, uh, or continue to trade that account alongside your funded accounts. So then that way everything is kind of compounding together. So not only are you making money off of trading, but you're continuously investing into that trading account, which is going to be your personal account from the funded accounts and then continue to reinvest in your own education and have other investments or start a business, something along those lines. So you just start building multiple different streams of income that essentially all started from just trading alone. That's how I would do things if I were to start from zero again, because nowadays you can leverage all these different prop firms. Doesn't matter if it's not on MetaTrader anymore, you adapt, you know, but that's essentially how I would start again from the beginning. And especially like if you already have the skill set built, it doesn't matter because I went from trading Forex to commodities, to futures and indices alongside each other. And you're talking about like different years of progression of different, uh, of trading different asset classes, you know, and it really just comes along with once you have the skill set, you could really trade anything that you want. Okay. So one thing that uh, a lot of people ask me that kind of hurts me a lot is like, they ask you, uh, what percentage can I expect to make out of this specific system? And essentially, there's no way that you can predict that or set goals around that because let's say if you fall short on a specific week or a specific month, now it's like, it's kind of forcing you to like take more trades or take mm -hmm. trades that are outside of that system. So I think when, when it comes to goal setting and getting to where you want to be in trading, you have to set goals that are not so much performance related. Like they have to be process related. So whether that's, uh, you know, sticking to my rules every single week, journaling all my trades every single week, or sticking within a certain trade frequency every single week, those are the goals that you really should be hitting and then let the returns take care of themselves. Because there's no way that I can come to the markets um, tomorrow or next week and say, I'm gonna make 3% this week or 3R, whatever the case is. It's just whatever the market's gonna give me is gonna give me. So did I follow the rest of the checklist, right, in order to, to progress? I think that's where a lot of traders can actually start seeing results is setting goals that are not performance related. Yep. Yeah, no, I think a, a big one that I get asked all the time is like somebody will send a picture of something and they're like, what did I do wrong here? I'm like, well, what makes you think you, th think you did something wrong? They're like, well, because I lost. I'm like, well, you don't understand how this works because like just because you lost doesn't mean you necessarily did anything wrong. Like you can win and do something wrong at the mm -hmm. end of the day. You know what I mean? So it's more or less like um, a lot of people, I, I, after working with a lot of people, um, I firmly believe most people don't even understand like what winning and trading actually looks like. Like they understand, yes, making money, but they don't understand that it's, it's not any kind of certainty, right? And I always tell people, I'm like, if you're looking for certainty, kind of touching on what you said, like, you need to go in a different field, right? Yeah. Like, because there's no guarantee here. There is no certainty. And if you look for certainty, you will be continuously disappointed. And you will continuously be on tilt, expecting something that no matter how good you get at this game, that you will never get. So that's, that's definitely the most common one that irks me, is I'm always just like, look, you can you can do everything right and still lose multiple times in a row and and having trust in whatever it is that you're doing and understanding that you have you're going to go through those swings is really what's going to separate you from being able to make money <coughs> long term rather than like have those big hits that you end up just losing so definitely love that well thank you all for being here today and it's been an incredible round table and i'm sure you know, people have taken away so much from this so you know thank you casper jacob <laughs> lambro and Banks, thank you for being here. Yeah, thanks and for having me. No, it's our absolute pleasure. Now, everyone, make sure the links for everyone here will be in the description below. So make sure you check those out. There will be other episodes and past roundtables up on screen too. Hit subscribe, drop a comment with your biggest takeaway from this roundtable. And until next time, everyone, take care.